Okay. Is John in? John's in. Great. Okay. It's 7.03 and I'd like to call the Concord Finance Committee meeting to order. So uh, we have a quorum and I would like to take a roll call vote uh, to open the meeting. So let me just get my screen set up here. Oh boy. Okay, this is not helping me. Let me see. Trying to be able to see everybody and it's not letting me. Anyway, all right, I'm going to do from what I can tell. Chris Reynolds, I'm here. Uh, Amrith Kumar. I'm here. Mary Hartman. Uh, here. Peggy Briggs. Here. Ray Andrews. Here. Dee Ortner. Here. Eric Dahlberg. Yeah. Mary Hartman. Here. Lois Wassoff. <laughs> okay. Good. Here. All right. Excellent. Sorry. So I will. Chris, you missed, you missed John Hickling, I think. Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, okay. John Hickling, are you here? Uh, I don't know. Let me think about it. Yes. I <laughs> <laughs> the other thing you can we do declare that you're here <laughs> chris the other thing you can do if you can't see everyone is just run down the participant list yeah that's what i'm doing yeah that's what i'm doing so um okay i gotta fix my screen okay all right so um first order of business here is minutes so we've had um an issue getting staffing associated with completing the minutes and so we're behind um i i uh enlisted some help from Lois to help kickstart the process because Carrie tells me she's going to be able to get some staff. So um, Lois, I did go back and look at what the, um, the last set was that I could tell. And I, I asked Carrie to confirm this, but uh, maybe she can tell us. I believe it's uh, April 22nd and 29th. Those were the ones, those are the, the oldest ones that we are missing. The 29th is both a regular meeting, Lois, and a hearing. So um, you can, you know, you can decide if you want to do both or you want to do one of them, you can choose. And then the hope is that once we get that kick started, Carrie, that your person will be able to use that as a template to complete the rest. Does that make sense to you? Yes, that's what we're hoping. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> I'll, so I will. I'll work up minutes for those meetings and send them initially just to Chris and Carrie just to make sure that they are comfortable with the format. Um, and hopefully this will become a, you know, a way to, to make this easier for staff. That's great. Thank you very much, Lois. Much appreciated. Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, Chair's, Chair's comments. If everybody else can go on mute, that would be great. Um, so uh, a lot going on, um, just to uh, update you on a, on a couple of things here. So um, next week on Monday, the 31st, the select board is holding a session that um, I've been invited to, and certainly it'll be an open meeting. So you guys can um, tune in as well with respect to the town's use of ARPA. So, um, I'm looking forward to that to see what's you know what's available on that, uh, and how how others in the town and citizens included think those funds should be used. So I believe we have about five million dollars or so. Um, there may that that is available to us. There may even be more. That my date my information may be old. So that's coming up on Monday. Um, I think given where we are with uh, COVID. This meeting obviously is at Zoom. My expectation is until something else changes, we'll continue to be on Zoom. I don't know what that means for the hearings. We need to talk about that, but at least for tonight's meeting and the Janu uh, pardon me, the February meeting, I would expect we would hold our meeting over Zoom. Okay. Um, we'll have a new member joining us. So you may be aware that we were uh, one slot open when, uh, uh, um, Andrea uh, left us. So um, I've had a conversation with them. Seems like very uh, great addition to our team. Not sure when he's gonna sign up, but uh, it should be imminent. So we'll have a new member joining us soon. 
Uh, I also want to really just sort of reset here, where are we as a committee in terms of our work? So from the guidelines perspective, and we're going to talk about this tonight, we're still working through the responses from, uh, to our final guideline from town and from um, CPC. So the high school has, has voted a, a budget that's within guidelines, but those other two units we're still working on, and we'll do some work on that tonight. Um, with respect to the um, annual town meeting, so there was a warrant articles preview, and tonight we're gonna go through that and just get some agreement on um, the items that we believe we're gonna be weighing in on. This is our first conversation. It'll be one of many, but we're gonna have it, we're gonna be in tonight. And we'll you know, talk about how do we, uh, what work do we need to do, assignment of duties and so forth. Part of that process is the hearings. So in, uh, I think it's the end of February, beginning in March, uh, there is a, a series of hearings FinCom sponsors three of those, and so we'll be involved with hearings in February as well as a regular meeting. Uh, let's see, we have part of that getting to town meeting as well is the uh, FinCom report, so we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, with respect to topics that we were interested in, so we talked about affordable housing and how we wanted a better way to evaluate requests with respect to affordable housing. So we're gonna have an update on that this evening. So uh, we're not done, but we'll have, we'll have I think, a good update on where we are. Uh, capital spending was another topic that was on our list. Uh, at, at, back in June, we talked about what we're focused on this year for FinCom. Obviously, uh, we have the, uh, the middle school uh, special town meeting last week. We have the ballot vote on February 3rd, I believe, I have that right. Um, there'll be a... Uh, uh, capital plan warrant articles for the town, for CPS, and for the high school. And um, so we'll have some, some work to do there. And there's also this item with respect to land acquisition around Acevet Bluff, which we're going to touch on this evening as well. So we'll give you an update on that item. So that's sort of a where are we. Um, uh, I'm still working through with Kerry sort of transition. So as she transitions into her uh, uh, role as uh, acting town manager, there'll be some changes in terms of um, who we may interact with at FinCom, but that's not yet settled. So we're still uh, working through that. And uh, it was discussed, I think, at last week's uh, school committee uh, meeting that Jared Stanton, who's the finance director for the school system, is, has taken another position and he will be um, uh, staying with us through, I believe it's May, and then he, he departs. So uh, Jared's been a big help to us in a lot of our work. So we, we send our um, appreciation to him for all his good work and we wish him well on his next endeavor, but we'll have plenty of time to work with him between now and May. And I'm sure we will see more of him as we get ready for town meeting. Okay. So those are my, my comments on um, sort of general matters. Correspondence. So you saw uh, there was a letter that came in from a citizen around um, the articulation of FinCom's uh, rationale behind support for Article 1 at Special Town Meeting and uh, obviously the ballot question around support for the debt associated with the middle school project. So you saw my response to that. Um, so uh, what, I, what I would propose, uh, given this citizen's concerns, uh, is that tonight, and I'm happy, I, I was going to make a statement right now, right here, so folks could listen in to, to sort of re-articulate exactly our, our uh, points with respect to approving or supporting, if you will, affirmative action on, on Article 1. Are folks okay with that? I can't see you all, but I see yes, a lot absolutely. of Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I, thought, I, thought your, I thought your response was excellent. Okay, thank you. All right, so, um, so, so noted. So FinCom support affirmative vote on Article 1 is based on the following. So obviously we understand the substantial tax impact this item has on the taxpayer. That's foremost in our mind. But these are the reasons underlying our support for Article 1. First, the middle school replacement is more cost effective than repair for two buildings at the end of their useful lives. Both of those buildings are over 50 years old. 
Second, state funding assistance is now unlikely after four unsuccessful attempts. The 102.8 million in project costs comes close to the estimated range set at the 2019 town meeting and includes a $2 million contingency reserve, which can only be used uh, for price escalation at time of bid. And lastly, the process used to develop the building plan and cost estimates was transparent, collaborative, and appropriately informed. The plan and budget reflect input from stakeholders, balancing educational needs, community desires, and cost concerns. So there you have it, folks. So uh, that's my comment on that. And I'm going to go to the next item, which is reduction in free cash. And Carrie, I'm going to. Oh, go ahead, please, Peggy. Yes, Christine, Sorry, would, would you like it. us all to? Would you like us all to formally or or somehow sign on to that response? Um, sure, that would be great. I now I've got you back. Now I, I'm sorry. I didn't have my screen proper. Now I can see you all. Okay, I feel a lot better. <laughs> if you would like to, that's fine. I, I'm I'm comfortable with you know the response that we provided, but uh, I'm, obviously, what would the committee like to do? Well, we could. The simplest thing, if people are comfortable with this, is to make a motion um, to endorse your um, your statement of um, our reasons, and then take okay. a vote. Are people okay uh, with that? I so move. I second. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah. Uh, did everybody receive this? I did not receive this. Oh, it was, it was, attached, to it was attached to the agenda. In the packet. Yeah. It's in the in tonight's yeah. packet? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Christine, didn't we, if these are the, the points that we already had explicitly laid out in our, our report, Right, these were already endorsed by FinCom, correct? They were. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Way, you know, they were. It's it's. I, I think all, these it, points it, are all part it, underlie our our affirmative action in our well, FinCom. I, I think it's all reiteration, but just to back Christine up with this particular um, resident, I think it will be useful to have the entire board. Back on this letter. Can people go on mute? I don't know who's There's not on mute. Cross talk somewhere. Yeah. Sorry, Peggy. Are, are you done? <laughs> Any other discuss? Yeah. Uh, uh, Eric. Yes, I agree. I mean, I think we spent many meetings talking about this, um, and it's you know re reflected in the discussion and what will eventually be the, the the minutes of those meetings. So to me, it's unnecessary, but um. Of course, happy to go with the flow here if we want to take a vote. Okay, uh, Amrith. Christine, I would. I think we should take a vote because, especially because the citizen seems to believe that FinCom is abdicating its responsibility, which I don't think is the case. I think it's important to realize that, or for the public to know that all of the FinCom has thought about this, and yes, we all do agree with the things which you said. So, happy to make happy to sign on to the motion. Okay. Uh, uh, Greg, I think you have your hand up still. Yeah, um, question on that. I, I did not take the uh, materials at town meeting because I felt I was well-educated and knew most of what was going on. Was it in the in the materials at the town meeting, FinCom's uh, stance on this motion? Because I think that's what the, the, the town- the, the report is, was there. So the report, there was no separate statement. No. Right, I think that's probably what they missed, sentence, the separate said we. I'm sorry, um, everybody's talking at once. Let, let Greg finish, please. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think that's what the, the citizen is, is claiming is that they did not see FinCom's on a yeah. warrant. Usually we have like, here's the warrant article, here's FinCom's response. I believe they are saying that they did not see that. You can't you can say it was in the material there, but I don't think it was printed right next to the article, right? So I, I agree yeah. with everything. You know. Okay, all right. So uh, any more discussion? If not, we'll take a vote unless... Somebody wants to, okay, so uh, Chris Reynolds, aye. Greg Gariello. Aye. Carrie LaFleur. Oh, Carrie LaFleur. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Carrie. <laughs> I'd like to make you a voting member. Mary Hartman. Yes. Peggy Briggs. Yes. Dee Ortner. Yes. Ray Andrews. Yes. Eric Dahlberg. Yes. Uh, Brian Taylor. Yes. 
Amrit Kumar. Yes. Dean Banfield. Yes. Lois Wassoff. Yes. Uh, John Hickling. Affirmative. Okay, I think I got everybody. All right, good. All right, so thank you very much for that. We will move this on to- Sorry to be yes, too detailed, but it was a matter of process. Will you put that in a, in a letter and have it, uh, you know, sent by the entire FinCom or you just, or we'll just leave it as is? I think we'll leave okay. it as is. I responded to it. Uh, uh, the, the citizen may be watching this. I suspect she is, so. Okay. I'm okay with that. All right. Yep. Uh, all right. So reduction in free cash estimates. So Carrie, um, can you give us, give the committee an update on uh, where we are in free cash and what was the, the reason for the change? Sure. So at this moment in time, uh, our free cash is still not certified. So these are, these are still estimates. When we started the budget process, we had estimated free cash at about $8.5 million. And that was uh, fairly early in the process. Our, not to provide too, too much detail, but our fiscal year closes on June 30. We hold the fiscal year open until September 30 to account for certain grant activity. So we have, um, for instance, we received chapter 90 funds from the state for road construction. And we can submit, it's a reimbursement program. We can submit up to June 30 and the state has until September 30 to provide the reimbursement, but that's activity is for the prior year. So there are various um, grant programs on both the town side and the school side that we are recording activity through September 30. So I worked with the town accountant to come up with the $8.5 million estimate. We looked at the prior um, free cash certification, took into account the appropriations made at the 2021 town meeting, factored in our estimate of results from fiscal 20. 2021 and came up with about $8.5 million. Um, we now believe that estimate may be seven and a half to 7.7. .7, although we have one item that we are still working through with the Department of Revenue, we don't understand why it's impacting free cash. And I, I won't get into the, the details of it so much. We hope to have an answer within the next week or so. And that, that would um, keep us at about 8.5 million. I'm, I'm not sure whether that's gonna happen. So the issue going between, uh, the reduction between 8.5 to 7.5 has to do with activity on the school side that came in to us in October after, um, and it's not that we can't, we can't put it back. The, the earliest we can close our books and submit to have free cash certified is October 1st, but we, we can do it at any point after that. And the reason that there was some late, I would call it later than normal school activity, really has to do with the fact that we all had substantial reporting requirements related to the CARES funding and ESSER funding with timetables and reports due to the state right at the same time that we're trying to do all of this. And those timetables and deadlines were obviously tighter than closing the books and, and getting um, a balance sheet to the state. And so had I, I, I never really dig into the free cash calculation. Um, with the town accountant, that's that's something that the town accountant does. Had I dug into it and seen that that she was carrying a number for school for turn back that was in excess of a million dollars, I I would have said and should have said that there's there's no way that's going to happen because the superintendent reported to you and the school committee that they expected I think around two hundred or two hundred and fifty turn back. But, but it really was the slowdown because of all of the 
um, additional reporting that we were doing for the pandemic that they were not able to encumber uh, amounts that they for any activity that was remaining in 2021. So that that's really where we are. It's um, due to the pandemic and all of the additional activity. Uh, no reason to believe this this is something that is going to continue happening. It hasn't happened up until this point. Okay, so um, so we're a million dollars shorter than what we thought where we thought we were when we were reviewing the uh, uh, the guidelines. Is that that's sort of where we are. That's where we are right now, um, but we do we do have one item we're still trying to to work through with them that we don't understand. It's about seven hundred thousand dollars in total, and if we're we're not understanding why it's impacting our free cash and hoping to make some headway with the state, and if so, then we would be that closer to the eight and a half million dollar. So whatever this item is that you're you're pursuing is is a million dollars as well. It's it's about seven hundred thousand dollars, and it's okay. it's related to deferred revenue. And the way the town accountant explained it to me, she thinks it has to do with the overlay account and the and the increase in the overlay account. And that it that doesn't make any sense to me because the overlay is um, not part of it's it's a it's a reserved or restricted part of fund balance. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be entering into this equation at this point. And, and when do you think that will be resolved, Terry? We, um, I think within a, within a couple of weeks at the most, we, we are still waiting to hear back from the Department of Revenue. They're pretty quick to get back to us. So maybe even tomorrow we'll hear, hear what they have to say about that particular item. And are you, conf do you are you pretty confident it's going to go that way, or is or if you you know if you were a betting person, do you think we're going to get that seven hundred? You know, I I don't know for sure. If 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 it's exactly the way it was explained to me, it doesn't make any sense why it is it is being included. But it's not it's not my call. It's okay. it's the Department of Revenue, and I've seen them do odd things. Okay. In the past. Okay. So the, the reason why, so it sounds like there were some wrong assumptions made in the development of the 8.5 million yes, by, that, by, the, that, by the town accountant and that, and that is what led us to where we were. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's my department, so I'm, I'm the responsible okay. party. Okay, all right. Okay, folks have some questions. I think Amrith. Um. Thank you. Is this a deviation from how we would do things in prior years, or is this is there some is there some change in this? Because overlay accounts and uh, free cash puzzles me a little bit. So I'm curious whether we made some accounting change or something like that. We we did not make an accounting change, um, and it, we are also puzzled. Okay. <clears throat> uh, John. Terry, the seven and a half million, what does that represent as a percentage in our percentage range uh, targets that we use? So 7.5 million would be 6.29%. Okay, Mary. Um, thanks. Okay, so Terry, is it safe to characterize this as a, as a miscommunication as opposed to I just want to I just want to be re reassured that there isn't any overspending on the part of the schools that resulted in some kind of encumbrances that you were unaware of. Um, Is that it's absolutely does not have to do with anything any kind of overspending. It it really is timing. Um, okay. It's and it's unfortunate that that it went on as late as it did, but there certainly were extenuating circumstances this year with, with all of the, um, the CARES reporting. I mean, we typically have our free cash certified long before this, but because of all of the time that was spent on that CARES reporting, we are also behind schedule. Thank you. Okay, um, John, your hand's still up. Are you all set? 
I'm assuming he. Yes, sorry, all set. Sorry about okay. that. That's all set. right. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on that? If not, I'm gonna move into the next topic. Okay. Um, so update on uh, the town and the school's uh, response to the final guidelines. So uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, the, um, the school board, uh, I think I'm losing track of time, a week or a week and a half ago, voted on their operating budgets and their capital budgets for what's gonna go into the warrant. So they voted CPS and the high school operating and, and capital budget information. The high school is, uh, it, they have met guideline at the high school. And as, uh, as we were, as we sort of discussed, um, I think earlier, uh, they, they're, they're about $400,000 apart from the guideline at CPS. So um, they're not done. So I wanna be clear. So this is the budget that they're going into the warrant with. They, the school board intends to continue to work on it and they, and they are. So they're not done. They, have, um, uh, they did make some adjustments. So there were some about 160,000 or so in revenue that they adjusted. Uh, so they did make a move. There is a movement towards the guideline. It still leaves us uh, reasonably far apart. Um, but they asked um, the superintendent to go back and take a look at um, what, uh, if you looked at their percentage growth versus where we were. So our final guideline is a 2.8% increase to the operating budget at the high school. So where they are right now, I think is like 3.5 thereabouts. So um, uh, the school committee asked them to go back and take a look at what it would take to get to 3.3% growth. So not saying that's where they're going, but just they wanted to understand what would be the implications of that uh, to budget items, to service and so forth, if, uh, if they needed to come down to 3.3. So they're still reviewing it. So that's where, that's where the, 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 uh, the schools are. On the um, capital budgets, just FYI. So the high school, is going to have a warrant article for the ring road. If you remember a couple of years back, uh, they had an article for the ring road and the lighting and um, it, was, it did not pass at a town meeting. So um, if you recall, a year ago, they took $200,000 of excess at the high school and set it aside for capital stabilization. So they're gonna use it uh, this year. So I believe the cost of the item is about a million dollars, but the warrant article that they'll put forth is around 800,000 because they're going to assume usage of the um, stabilization reserve that they created. So, uh, and then at CPS, the, the uh, capital item is the same as we've seen historically. It's about $900,000 and that's included in the town's budget. So, that's where the, where the schools ended up. The town, uh, we haven't seen, so we, we had um, uh, an original, we had one response uh, to it. We still have a bit of a gap with the town. I think initially, um, Carrie, the thought was that that was gonna be closed. I don't know where we are today. I don't know if you have any update on where the town is on their budget uh, process. So we do have a budget plan that meets the guideline. However, we, in order to do that, we are planning to once again carry forward about a half a million dollars of unspent fiscal 22 to, uh, to, to meet the guideline. Most of that is going towards restoring capital. So our our tier one capital, you will recall in past years, it was about 2 million. In 21, it was 1.2. In 22, it was 800. Uh, we have a plan for 23 to get to 1.5 million. But that between operating and tier one, in order to meet the guideline, we're planning to carry forward about a half million dollars. And we are able to do that um, again, because of vacancies that we have, uh, we've 
we're having a heck of a time filling certain positions and um, and that's it's taking longer to fill positions so we do have we do have funding as a result of vacancies so if um, i if i make sure i understand that then so when we you you're assuming that the fy uh 22 budget will have some underspending and in order to meet the fy 23 budget you're going to uh, as opposed to letting it ride to free cash, you would you're, you're going to need it to to make up the guideline difference. Yes. Is that, okay. Yeah. The people and I want to make sure folks understand that. Yeah. Last the year before we had that problem. I think maybe it was eight or nine hundred thousand. It's we've done it for two years and it's been between eight eight and nine hundred thousand. Right. So it just puts more, it, it's just more downward pressure on free cash the next year. It just means yes. there's, there's less surplus potentially, yeah. you know, coming. And, um, and it's a bit of a bet that you're taking, Carrie, right? Because if, if, if that surplus doesn't arise, what oh, would happen? Yeah. Um, it will arise because I'm, I'm going to tie, I'm gonna encumber, the amount that I need, okay. so it can't be spent. Okay, I see. Um, and and we uh, we took a very hard look at our tier one capital, and it's just between the 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 much smaller plans we've had the last two years, the need to when we replace vehicles to replace them with electric vehicles that are have a substantial increase in price, we just were not able to go below 1.5 um, and you know in good conscience because it it's just we we have uh, we use that money to replace equipment that public safety uses our all of our computer technology um, vehicles and right I mean the committee is is very sensitive to that and that was why we we allocated additional funds to the town in the guideline. Yeah. So um, we hear you. We we tried to help. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I appreciate that. Yeah. The, the other issue is we our salary increase is the the salary reserve is needs to be in the current year. It's seven hundred thousand uh, dollars we did have about two hundred thousand dollars in encumbered salary reserve because we had some contracts outstanding and so our salary reserve the total need for salary reserve in the current fiscal year is about nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars going into fiscal 23 it, it's at nine hundred thousand dollars and that we have some ground to make up we had two years where non-union staff received very modest increases um, and, and we have some ground to make up to, to stick, to keep relatively on par with what the union employees received and what their counterparts in other communities are receiving. So it, we're making up ground for sure. So the 900,000 is something you can use for that. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, that, but that's, we, a, that's a good thing, right? Yes, yeah. right. But I was hoping we had we had been carrying seven hundred thousand. I thought I was hoping we would be able to to get away with seven hundred thousand, but we just. Oh, we, I see what you're saying. I see. I see. The need is higher. Yep, yeah. I, I understand now. Okay, I got lots of questions, so I'm sorry I didn't figure out who was first. I'm going to go to Dean. Uh, yes, yeah, refresh my memory, Carrie. But what accounts? Uh, other than snow and ice, are you allowed to carry something from one year to the next without having anything just fall straight through to free cash? What what accounts will allow you to carry five hundred thousand dollars into the next budget? So I, um, what what we the mechanism that we use is um, well, I can't I can't cite. <laughs> See, I've, I've already lost my my ability to cite state law two and a half weeks in, into this, into the new job. So there is a provision. It, it, the, the provision- The in-town manager will do that to you, Carrie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's it's section 40, 
3D, but I can't think of, of what the chapter is. So it's, it is the, the provision in Mass General Law that allows us to make year-end transfers. There's a paragraph A that allows the year-end transfers. Paragraph B allows town meeting to transfer prior to the close of the fiscal year. So at, at May 1 town meeting, we will ask town meeting to transfer $500,000 from the fiscal 22 appropriation to help fund fiscal 23. So it, it, it will occur before the close of the fiscal year. Okay, I, so you, this is not something that you can do on an accounting basis. You have to ask town meeting specifically to allow this to occur. Okay. Yes, that's correct. And, and that's yep. how we've handled it the last two years. Okay. Uh, Mary. I think I have a follow on question to what Dean just said. Carrie, do we ever go back and look at encumbrances that we've made because of the capital outlay? Um, articles and say that this is money that for whatever reason we haven't spent because we didn't have the management cycles or whatever and then we release that money back to free cash do you ever do you ever we, do that yes it well yes yes to part of it so what what we have done is each each year as we're preparing for town meeting, we make a review. I mean, we make many reviews of all of the capital projects, but for sure, one last review as we're putting together the uh, motions for town meeting and where we have unspent yep. capital, we, we can ask town meeting to use the unspent portion as a funding source for yep. future capital. So if it's a tier two, if it's a debt, if it's a debt capital, it can't be, re if it's released, it's, um, well, I guess it depends if it's been bonded and it shouldn't be bonded. If it's tier two and it is released, it doesn't go back to free cash because it was debt, debt right. financing. So yeah. it would just be if it was tier one. Okay. Um, but yes, it could either be released okay. or it could be used as a funding source. Okay, the re where I'm going with this is, um, as Chris was saying earlier, we're putting a lot of downward pressure on free cash because we're using it to fund the town budget to meet guideline. We've been telling the town that we've got a $5 million stabilization fund to help smooth out the bump in the middle school and we're not there yet. Um, so is this a source for us to perhaps get some money for the stabilization so that we can in fact build that up to the 5 million so that we can smooth that out. I'm looking for, I'm looking for money. <laughs> if there is unspent tier one capital yep. and, and a project is not gonna happen, yep. yes, that could be a source. And do you see any, do you do that review normally or, or is that oh, yeah. something? We always we always do that review and, and I can tell you there's no there really isn't any any money there now because that tier one capital has been drastically cut over the last couple of years. Well, I'm thinking of the seventy five thousand dollars that we were looking at for the feasibility study for the reformatory trail and I'm looking back at that and I'm thinking, is that really you know what if that wasn't never spent for the intended purpose can that be freed up for other uses so that's what triggered that's where i'm going yeah, yeah. That, and that that that, that 75000 was actually approved as a tier 2 so it's a debt it's it's not a cash it's oh a i didn't know that okay yeah. okay okay uh amrith this is just more of a general question. I, th I think I heard you say that there's $200,000 the school has in a capital stabilization account and they're carrying forward another 500,000 through an action at town meeting. Um, is this a common thing in Concord? Uh, <clears throat> and the second is, given the number of places where we're looking for free cash, would it not be better to let the money go to free cash and then figure out what the best place to serve. Mary talked about one, we're looking for money to bridge the gap in the middle school. Um, the last thing, and this is something I'm not 
particularly sure about, but when you carry money from one year to the next, how does that square with the spirit of how we set the guidelines? Doesn't it go counter to the guidelines which we set? Should, would, if we had known this before we set the guidelines, would we have given the school a lower guideline number? It's actually the town, I think. The town, right. The, the town. town, okay. Um, go oh, ahead, go ahead, Carrie. No, I, I, was, I was just gonna say, you know, that I think to be fair to the town, the, the town had negative budget growth in fiscal 21. Right, the town, the, the town's budget, fiscal 21 versus 20 was negative because of the pandemic. Um, and the growth has been, I think, fairly modest going forward. We have been lucky because, because of the pandemic, we have not been at 100% operation. We've mm -hmm. had a lot of savings in the library in particular. Um, and so we were able to get by with, with a, um, a reduced budget in 21 and a, a pretty low growth budget in, in 22. So sure, I, I understand the, the concern or the point about if we knew that there was going to be savings, you might have taken that into account. Um, but well, the, we, we are looking to increase the, the tier one capital by $700,000. May, may I ask a quick follow-up, Christine? Sure. So, so you, you make a good point. The budget came down a couple of years in a row. But as we come out of the pandemic three years later, I expect that we're going to have to spend money on a different set of things, which we've maybe not been spending for two years. Wouldn't it be better if the money which we have went to free cash so we could decide what we wanted to do with it rather than assume that the expenditure would be the same thing for which it was appropriated a, a period of time ago, a lifetime ago, given that what came in the middle was a pandemic. Um, would, would there be a consideration to maybe look at what our expenses are gonna be in the future and say, where would we best wanna spend it? Maybe it's not what we thought we would do two years ago. Yeah, no, I, I understand the point that you're making. And, um, you know, I have, I have a lot of ideas about how, how we start the fiscal 24 budget process and how it is presented. Um, and, you know, when we start talking about it, when the select board becomes involved because there are a lot of initiatives that the town is is looking to fund electric vehicles deib initiatives uh, other sustainability projects and we are trying each year to add these things economic vitality into the budget with with very modest increases and in the in the last five years or so, the property tax increase has, has been two and a half percent or below. So there's a lot of pressure to maintain what we have, fund new initiatives, be competitive with, with salaries and benefits um, with, with pretty small increases. And, and, and that's why I understand you're, you're doing your due diligence. And, and I think where the town hasn't done the greatest job is getting the select board involved in talking about these initiatives up front in front of the budget process and what the cost of, of them are, because we're just trying to, to fund all of these different things, make up, make up um, the reduction in the capital that we took to, to keep the property tax increase relatively low. And yeah, it's, it's it's a difficult balancing act. I, I agree. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Yes, Peggy. Um, I'm sorry. I had my hand up and I put it down oh. <laughs> um, because I thought Dean was getting to my question. So, uh, well, but first of all, I do appreciate that every committee in town is putting forth new initiatives, um, and it's up to the select board to decide what they want to 
you know, advance. But my question was more about how it, how, how we slide money from this year to next year without making it go through free cash. And Dean kind of got to that, but I, I'm new and I don't, and I, I didn't quite understand how we take half a million and move it to 2023 without making it go into free cash and getting renegotiated. So the reason it doesn't go to free cash is because town meeting prior to the close of fiscal year is going to be asked to transfer it to a different article. So it's it, the transfer happens before the close of the year. And again, that's that's why it's not it's not a part of the free cash calculation at year end. But if we didn't do that, it would be. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, so, is, so is town meeting clear that that it, it's really what they're voting is five hundred thousand dollars out of free cash. Well, out of surplus. I don't know what the words are on the. Um, well, it would be if it article. would be if it would otherwise be in free cash. Yes. They're yes. basically spending half a million of free cash. Yes, they are essentially. But at the time when they make the motion, it would still not be in free cash because it'll still be before the fiscal year books are right. closed. Right. So would probably do it in a special town meeting just before the annual town meeting where you're still dealing with last year's yeah. finances. Well, yeah. yeah, I understand that, but you know, the old saying is cash is cash. So, you know, okay. Yep. That, I, that's, your, that point, your, your point is right, Peggy. Dean? But I think um, just to put a finer point on all of it, um, if something ends up in free cash, it is not part of the of the next year's budgeting process. It's it's a cash account. And specific articles do extract money from free cash for very specific reasons. And we'd like to sort of minimize that use of money because it it it's way outside the budgeting process. So this process that we're supposed to we're going to engage in is asking one town meeting to move $500,000 to a future budget year to be part of the town's budgeting process. So it, you know, when it ends up in free cash, then we have these individual articles that say half a million dollars for affordable housing, half a million dollars to go into the, you know, stabilization fund for the middle school. You know, we'd prefer, I think, to have fewer of those, a, a very minimal number of those kinds of articles and, and let the budgeting process fund the town's operations and, and et cetera. So that, I think that's the distinction that's being made here is that we're moving it to next year's budget, yeah. not, you know, not to a, a, a pool that will then go right. through a town meeting allocation process, which we, I, I think from the finance committee perspective, we'd like to have those be minimized, so to speak. You know, that, that's my, my take on it, having been here a little while. So well, certainly okay. the, the overall you. budget, you know, the budget process um, is one, um, I mean, you know, to, to keep the, the wheels on the train, which is what we're, you know, we're sort of talking about, right? So this is not the, the one-off, wouldn't it, you know, is this is something I'd like, this is, these are needs, right? So if, as long as we're comfortable that these items that the funds would be used for are, are truly part of the recurring costs of running the town and keeping the services up, then I agree with your point, Dean. I think that's, I think that's a good point. Thank you. All right, um, so let's see, where does that leave us now? So um, we, we, I wanted to regroup a little bit here in terms of impact on tax rate, in terms of where we are. So I had asked Carrie to try and um, uh, play around with the model or perhaps just play around with it with us tonight so we could get a sense of, you know, we sort of knew where we were when we had the guideline. Now we have, um, we have some different information on free cash. Carrie, I don't know that there's anything new from you on revenue. So I think the governor did come out with something this week. I don't know if that, I don't know if you've yet absorbed that enough to give us a read on revenue. 
Yeah, so I did take a look at the governor's budget proposal. The net increase to the town is about $65,000. <laughs> um, I did. Does that, does that include CPS or no? Yes, it does. does. <laughs> so, so all of our budget. It's, it's great to be all... independent. Independent. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I did go back and I looked at I looked at all of our other revenue estimates and including the sixty five thousand from the governor. <laughs> I think we I think we can bump bump up our revenue estimates. I came up with about four hundred and thirty three thousand dollars, so four hundred four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, including the additional state aid. I think I think we can do comfortably. Okay. Um, and I, uh, yeah, okay. And maybe the, 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 okay, that's good. You know, the, the region could have something as well, but that's, that's the region we're already, we're already set with. So if we, that would be good news. When, when do you think you'll, are you comfortable with that today, Carrie, or is that something that you want more time to? Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that today. We are working on our final documents and, and I think, okay. I think okay. that's the number that I'll go with. Okay, so we have less free cash than we thought, uh, but a little bit more revenue. So, and we we also still have a gap on uh, on the CPS budget. So, um, if it's possible, is there a way for us to sort of take that information and understand what that means to tax rates under different scenarios? Which is what I was hoping we could do. Yes. It wasn't too much of a lift for you, Carrie. Um, yep, so I'm going to share my screen. This is the guidelines model. I should have I should have tried it uh, before. So when we when we have new revenue, we add it in here. Where? Hmm. Oh, this is terrible. So what I would do, sorry. Okay, so this, this line here represents your final guideline. Okay. 3.37% 3. 3. increase. Okay. To tax. Can you expand that so we are not looking at a lot of white space on the right and the numbers yeah. are bigger. It's just hard to, thank you very much. Yeah, that, that's better. Thank much you, better. Carrie. Very nice, thank you. Good, good, good. Now I have to hide all of you, so I can. <laughs> okay. That's a better so, deal. <laughs> let's go just up so you can see this. This is, this is good. It means I stopped moving my mouse trying to make it bigger. <laughs> all right, right. I do the same thing. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. so we want to add three hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take it out of here that's going to bring the tax increase down to about three percent and that's was, the I'm revenue sorry, adjustment was, i'm sorry what was the 377 that's the additional oh no it's sorry it's four it, it, it was 450 you thought right fourth it was fourth 437 437 okay that was... that's revenue peggy that's that's the additional oh. revenue okay All right. let's just call it 450 okay all right so that brings you down to about 2.89 in property okay. tax increase so can i can i just chris can i ask yeah. This assumes everybody comes in at guideline and we have a million dollars of free cash to offset the operating budgets. Is that That's correct? correct? So free cash does does matter here. Yes, it does. Yes, we were talking does. before about it. it. It does. So we're assuming the town votes a million dollars of free cash right. and everybody comes in at guidelines. Just want to be clear. OK, yep. Yep. Thank, that's right. Thank this you. is this is everything was the same as where we were before, except for the revenue adjustment. Okay, good. So if everything was static, but we, but we recognize that we we believe we have higher revenue, then the rate on the the the, the taxes would be two point eight nine on the median bill. Okay. Great. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. Now, 
if we so Carrie, let's talk about free cash. So if we <laughs> don't we don't yet know if we're going to be at seven four or eight one, depending on this seven hundred thousand dollar item that you have rolling around. Is that fair? Yes. So if we assumed that we were at seven four, which as you mentioned to John is six point two nine percent. Let's talk about where you want to be on the floor in free cash. So uh, I think uh, prior to this, we thought we had, if it was 8.5 million, we thought there could be 2 million usage of free cash. And that would bring you to 6.5 million, which I think is maybe around 6%, which you felt comfortable uh, from a bond rating perspective uh, that, that we, that was probably as low as you wanted to go. That, that was, that's the last conversation that I recall. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, I think we're fine as long as we're at five. Okay. So. So what is five? Yeah, so yeah, what's five? Get, okay. So here in this, I can make this a little bigger. Is this a good size? Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. It's so okay. <laughs> let me go a little bigger. So if we're at seven five, that's six point two nine percent. And if we if we're just assuming a million dollars for property taxes, yep, that brings it down to to five point four five percent. Okay. You also want to do a half a million for stabilization right and that essentially brings you down to five right but that leaves yeah. nothing for affordable housing interests that's right, right. you'll right. hear you'll hear something new about that yeah we have an update on that right yeah oh okay but it, it still it still would essentially take everything there was on free cash with the, with those just those two articles okay Okay, so and this uh, is sort of why we, a reason why we don't want a lot of articles that are trying to draw out free cash because you 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 have to manage this number, and uh, and it's just hard. You know, you want to you want things within the budget process, right? And for the past two years, we really not aren't adding to it, right? So right, that's we're not. that's really been the problem. And this year, we're not probably going to add to it much either. So right. Right. It's going to be it. It continues to be a low, you know, a, a low number, and we're about to issue a hundred million dollars in debt. That's why I'm, I'm concerned about, um, take you know, not having enough, having something happen. I mean, it's really meant there. You know, it's really meant for emergencies, right? So, like when we had the the culvert uh, problem uh, with the beavers uh, that cost us seven hundred thousand dollars to fix. That's what it's for, right? So if you actually had a problem that you needed the money, you'd be under your floor. So it makes me, but you know, you'd have it, but you'd, you'd be you'd be dipping down a little bit. So it's such okay. a it's such a misnomer. Yes, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yes. But like the name of it, yeah. Okay. All right. So all right. So Carrie, from a if are you comfortable? So we have our, our article, which we've done for a couple of years now, that has the million dollars in free cash. So if we, we really, we, for stabilization, we're only at uh, two plus we think we have the assessors. Is there anything that's gonna reduce that assessor a million? Are we still comfortable that we have that? Right, so you have, you have the two, you have the, the million from the board of assessors, they've already voted it. Right. And okay. then you've got the half a million that on this article. So that's three and a half. And honestly, I I think I think you can get another half million from the assessors either after they close their abatement period for this year or um, you know we we're planning the fiscal 23 budget assumes another half a million dollars into yep. the overlay account. 
their preference is going to be oh, right, right, right. Put, yeah. put the half million in to leave it in the budget pro forma. And but I think you can get another half a half million. Do you think I would get that before town meeting or is that in FY23? Should I should, you know one of Dee's questions was should we put the the Warren article in higher? Um, because I, because we can't go lower. But if we put it in higher and the assessors were able to give us more. Is that a better is that a better idea? You know, David, I, the million on the Warren article for debt stabilization, if to the extent that they had some more. Um, I'm pretty so. confident that they have it. And I, I do think that they will release it once once they vote to release it. It. Um, I suppose they could they could undo the vote. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. If you have more money, can you increase the the deposit? I I I would say it's probably best to go with what they have voted, and not more than that. But understand that they probably do have more than that, and probably would be willing to release. Okay. And okay. I, yeah, I, I just, I'm very confident that that we will get up to 5 million. Wow. In, okay. Um, yeah. But I think, I think Chris's question now is before the warrant closes, do we want to push the number in the yeah. warrant up to a million? Right. To give us some, some headroom. If we still only ask for 500, that's, that's an easy, that's an easy right. thing to do. Just drop off the number. But you know, if this is really coming together and that extra 500 is available from the overlay account, we can we can ask for a, a million from free cash and with great confidence that the it's all going to wash through in the in the free cash calculation. Well, so it's not the money that you're that the assessors are putting in is not free cash. It's overlay surplus. Right. So, so when I they guess, release it, what where does it go? It's overlay sur it's overlay surplus. Overlay. It's going to go um, directly into debt stabilization. That's what the the Warren article I see. says. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, it's, if, so if they released it and there was no town meeting action, it would go to free cash. But there is town meeting action to appropriate. Right. So I'm just no, but no, but oh. okay. So they've released a million, and we're going to take town meeting action to move that to stabilization. That, yeah. That's a different thing. If they release the extra five hundred thousand, it's going to just flow to free cash because we don't have another action at town meeting that tells. Oh, right. So, do. so we so wouldn't what, let them. Do, we wouldn't let them do that. I mean, we okay. would We would have. We would time the vote so that didn't happen. It would happen next year. It would happen yeah. next year. Yeah. 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 Mm. Well, they could do the vote anytime they want. If we ask for the free cash, they could they could vote to release it, and then it it'll 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 basically just wash through the free cash account. You know, yeah, they'll I mean, release I, it. I can guarantee you that the board of assessors is not going to release overlay to let it go to free cash. Okay, <laughs> <They're> <laughs> okay. Not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Fair enough. That makes I, sense I, to me. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So. Um, Let's go back, go back to your screen then, Carrie. So, so we're, we have enough free cash to do the two things we had originally proposed to do, which we're gonna vote on this evening. So let's go back, can you go back to the, uh, the model? And now if we can, we adjusted revenue, if we could adjust the, um, the guideline by uh, the total gap number that we have, and then, uh, perhaps reduce it to what uh, you know the the uh, the, uh, the schools um, are looking at, which is a lower increase. And so I I didn't quite catch what this the additional amount the schools are looking for. Okay, so right now the gap with us at the at the uh, at CPS is about three hundred and eighty thousand. Right. Chris, I thought it was closer to 486. Yeah, I have four. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, it's 480. I think it's, for, well, 
Oh, before the school one. committee okay. asked them, it was 486. That's before the before the school committee asked them to bring in any um, any. It any, was. Oh, yeah. okay. Then I must I must be I must have the wrong number. So the number the the, the last gap was 486. Mm -hmm. That's what you think. Okay. Then you show 486. I'm sorry. I I must have the wrong number. That's okay. Now we're going to go down and add the 486 in and see yeah, what it was an expense just to see what happens expense. to the rate, right? Yeah. I want to make sure you guys see what happens to the rate if we meet that, you know, if we try and close the gap. This is so big. All right. There you so go. We essentially. Well, you're going to be pretty close to where you were. Right. At three and a quarter. Oh, right. Because I've got revenue. Right. That makes sense. I've got revenue that's equal to what we were off by. So it comes in at 3.4. Okay. Okay. Now, Chris, we could do what you were talking about earlier, which is if they brought that down by, I think they yeah. brought it down by 130 or something. Closer. Yeah, it's, it's like... Uh, 2.8 to 3.4. So it's like it's 2% or something there on that. So I haven't done the math of what their actual, I haven't done their, their number. Um, let's see. What is, what is CPS's number? TY versus LY? I'll just see. Oh, you're waiting for me. All I'm looking for is, so I think right now the 486 represents like a 3.5% growth in their, in their budget. So if it was a 3.3%, what's that differential? That's what I'm trying to figure out. This, this shows a 3.87% increase. Yeah. So you, you want. Well, you know, they all, yeah. 3.3? <laughs> 3.3 was, I believe, the number that they were off to go look at. So that's a, a reduction of 238,368. Mm -hmm. So do you want that back down? Yeah, yeah, I'm curious what that would look like just to show just again, they haven't said that's where they're coming in, but it's just a way for me to, us to see what the range might be. I think you went the wrong way there. Did you want to subtract? Yeah, that? I did. Yes, I did. So you were at 3.37 and now 3.16. 3.16%. If they can come down a bit more. Okay. Okay. Um, so we are, we were originally, we were. Uh, 3.37, something like that? Yes. Then we added revenue and that brought us down. So if we did nothing and we just took the revenue, we'd be at 2.89. If we take the revenue and we adjust um, to perhaps a lower increase for CPS, we'd be at 3.16. Yeah. If, if they cannot reduce it, you're somewhere around 3.2 four about right about what we were to start with 3.41 okay. yeah okay okay Chris but that does assume that 3. Really 6, one. go ahead where's I thought it was 3.61 that we were at but maybe I missed that number no, when, we when you when you added the when you netted the 450 revenue but you added the 486. I thought it drove it up to like 4.61, but I guess I must have misread the spreadsheet at that point. No, that's that's what's showing right that's now. That's what's here. Okay. 
three point so it's three point four four one. Okay, three point four one. Okay. Chris, Go ahead. I, Chris, I think it's realistic to think that the schools, the school committee will come back with some um reduction of that four hundred and eighty six thousand dollar gap. I really do. So coming in at the three point one six, I don't it sounds attainable to me. So the question that it will be before us is do we make a final adjustment of our guideline or do we just hold the line and, and say we really this is what we want we're in disagreement we are just right not in well, that's what I, exactly so that's what i was trying to understand is given that revenue was moving and we were having other discussions about free cash what were the implications of that right so that's what i'm that's what we're looking at now so at least we know because we found revenue uh, that carries pretty comfortable on, and again, the the uh, the schools may find some other things in the expense category, which would be helpful. Um, we're we're somewhere between you know where we originally were. We're around where we originally between three and three point four. We're somewhere in that range. Yep, is kind of where we are right now. Yep. Okay, well that that's helpful to me to try and understand where are we. On, on the and then the other real question was if if we're still comfortable asking for the million dollars in support um, understanding I guess you know as we go into into um, town meeting what are the other requests going to be on free cash so let's talk about affordable housing for just a second Harry, yeah. wait Chris oh, before sorry, we I'm before sorry. Before we leave this, um, yep. Cynthia Rainey, the chair of the school committee, has an update on the uh, region budget that I think is pertinent to the discussion we're having here. Oh, okay. You want to just um, hear yeah, from Yeah, can her? we bring Cynthia up? That would be great. Thank you, Mary. She's coming in now. Can you um, take uh, stop sharing your screen, um, Carrie, so I can see everybody? Thank you. Hey, Cynthia. Hi there. So uh, we we also got our revenue updated. Uh, is, it, is it yesterday? It seems like last week. Um, <laughs> so right now, the superintendent and uh, the assistant superintendent think we have a two hundred twenty five thousand additional revenue at the high school. Correct. Okay. So we will discuss and potentially vote a new budget next Tuesday. Okay. Well, that would be helpful. Well, result in the change in the assessments, assuming that the rest of the committee agrees. Okay, good, no, good to know, good so, to know. So Cynthia, we just had a large conversation about revenue identified this mm -hmm. year and how does that affect next year's budgeting process? I guess that's my question that I would have for you <laughs> as region. How, what, what would you do with revenue that you found? Is that revenue you're finding for in next year's budget? No, it's the it's the governor's budget for, for for the year we're budgeting for. I see for the year we're planning for. Okay, yeah. thank you. That's so that clarifies that. Yeah. So it, because of the pandemic, we got <laughs> Carrie knows this well. You know the this didn't go in the past years, a couple of years the way it usually goes. So we're now kind of back on track, where we have this information well in advance of our town meeting. Not quite enough in advance <laughs> before yeah. we had to vote our warrant articles. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, so you know, we got, so this is chapter 70, which we don't in Concord, that is not part of our school budget. At the region, chapter 70 and chapter 71, which is reimbursement for transportation, were considerably higher than we had anticipated. Great. Okay. That's great so, news. Good news, great news, so fabulous. Stay tuned <laughs> for the vote next Tuesday. Fabulous, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just, just to clarify for, because I'm, so the 225 is definitely going to additional revenue. It's not getting put on the table to divvy up at your next nope. meeting. Nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's All definitely right. leftovers. No one's going to eat it. <laughs> Thank Good. you. Thanks. Um, so just, just to give you an update as well on affordable housing, which is the other large uh, recurring quest to, to free cash. So um, there's been a lot of discussion around um, ARPA and the ability to tap into ARPA funds, which, which we, I mentioned at the outset, the town is having a meeting on next week. And um, Terry uh, sent me a note uh, that uh, they're very confident that um, 
uh, they, they can request the half a million from ARPA uh, versus free cash. Great. So I think that they plan to do that. So um, that would be, that would put a little, you know, get, take a little pressure off of, uh, of free cash as well. So, okay. Okay. So Carrie, if we want, so um, let me make sure anybody else. So from the committee's perspective, what I'd like to do, so I'm going to show you the two Warren articles that we would come forward with for, uh, for town meeting in May. One of them is around debt stabilization. The other one is around use of free cash. So if we're comfortable that we can take the million, which we've assumed, and we've done that for the past couple of years now, and we can also ask for half a million in debt stabilization, um, then I think we should vote those warrant articles, uh, the ability or approval of those warrant articles submissions tonight, and uh, I can get those in. So let me let me bring those up for you, and we can have discussion on that. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Here I go. Let's see if this works. Okay. So um, use of free cash. See, I've got some typos in there. I'll have to clean that up. <laughs> so this is, I copied this article from what we've done in the past. So we, we'd submit an article that says to determine whether the town will vote to transfer from free cash the sum of 1 million or any other sum to be used by the Board of Assessors to reduce the tax levy for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2023, or take any other action relative thereto. So that's how it should read. Apologize for my typos. So are we comfortable with the with requesting the million dollars for tax support for next year? Yes. 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 Okay, I see a question. Somebody's got yes. the um, is that John? I, John, you John, got I, that's me. Sorry, just parenthetically, I thought at a select board meeting recently, um, my understanding was the select board was questioning whether this article was a, a good use of free cash. And so I would hope uh, that our reinforcing that we think it is would uh, would help. I think I got that right. Yep. Um, I missed that if that was the case, John. So what, what did you hear the select board say? Uh, uh, if, if I understood select board member Johnson uh, correctly, he, he questioned whether uh, this, oh. you know. Um, yes, he asked a question about what happened to the tax rate. Is that what you're referring to? Well, maybe 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 it was a hypothetical uh, question about what it, what, you know, the levy would do if, if yes. you did Yes, yes, I remember now. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so okay. sorry, I just, just mentioned that. Um, no, that's a that's a that's a good point. I, I assume he was doing some of what we were doing, trying just, to figure out what happens to the tax rate depending upon where we are. But um, well, that, yeah, that's totally fine. If he's doing what ifs, that's totally fine. It's just you know, I'm right. Yeah, it, yeah, it may be, it may it may belie another, you know, another desire, but they have not publicly said that that I'm aware of as a body. That's right. Okay. Um, Ray. Yeah, it seems that this is a way of uh, what deferring of keeping the tax rate lower, uh, sort of. Um, whereas the um, using free cash for the stabilization fund is it just seems that they're contradictory to the degree of uh, the difference, half a million dollars. So you're saying we'll lower the tax rate by a million, but then we will take a million and uh, half a million rather and, and set it aside in the stabilization fund. Isn't the purpose to um, stabilize the tax rate down the road for the next, uh, well, during the peak, for the, for the peak of the debt service? Um, yeah. It five is five or five or ten years out. It would seem that um, that one way to do that would be to not 
move that much money, not move a million, move a half a million or something, to some way to to uh, reduce the amounts that were reduce uh, <laughs> to reduce the amount that we're reducing the tax rate. Well, well, by both, reducing this amount. Well, I'm not, I'm not following you. So so both amounts are 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 meant to benefit the you know the tax rate, right? So we're essentially taking funds that were not spent and saying we're not going to spend them on something else. We're gonna we're gonna either put them into you know, a stabilization reserve. That's what the half a million would be for to say, so we can spend it right. in the future. So we're not, we're not, um, yeah, I understand we're that. not raising a tax rate, but we're not lowering it either, right? We're not letting that half a million flow through somewhere else to be used. Cause it's not gonna, if it goes to free cash, it'll get absorbed somewhere. It's not, we don't, we don't typically sort of give it back other than this million dollars a year. That's where we have the support coming in. So we're lowering it here and we we don't lower it as much as perhaps we could have by the half a million. Does that make sense? That they're, I don't know, I see them as two different concepts. Yeah. Well, Does I see them as sense? related in that the purpose of the, of the stabilization fund as I see it is to transfer some of the debt burden from year four or five, somewhere out there uh, into this year and or into next year fiscal uh, 23 um and why wouldn't we take reduce this amount um and move it to the stabilization fund what well, i guess what not, i shouldn't be advocating for it i should really be asking a question uh, okay. what would it what would it do to the uh, tax rate projected tax rate four or five years from now if we took this million dollars or a half a million dollars and added it additionally to the to the stabilization fund. Oh, okay, I see what you're asking. So you could you could build up the stabilization fund more now. I see more what than you're the asking. five right with, more than with, the five million. Yeah, so right. just just stick with the million dollars, right? So you could take the million dollars instead of saying let's offset the tax rate, let the tax rate go higher and mm -hmm. use the million dollars to uh, 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 put it into stabilization, you could do that. You're right, right, right. You could. What, what we're what we're balancing is what the rate is today. So you could take the position right. that it's worth it to raise taxes a bit more this year. So uh, in order to get to the stabilization number faster, you could do that. Right. Yep, yeah. Or to or just to change the the, the income. But you're gonna you're the, gonna raise the rate above where we where we typically want to be. So that's the discussion, right. right? So right. If you're at if we're gonna be somewhere between three and three four, now you're gonna probably be three six, three seven. You're gonna be closer to four right. percent if we do that, Ray. Right, right. Yeah, so it's just a matter of that's the uh, that's the that's the calculus, if you will. Right. Yeah, it's just a matter of how far out and how high the bump is gonna be. Well, we know what the bump is going to be, right? So we know we got to get to five million. It's a question of whether you start to bump it now, or in, or you know, you could bump it higher now if you wanted to. If you wanted to, yeah. that's, what you're, that's what you're advocating for. Okay, I'm going to get to some others. I'm not um, sure I'm advocating, but I certainly would like to look at the spreadsheet <laughs> for that, and I would need to spend some time with Carrie's spreadsheet. Um, okay, so I don't know that we have time for that. So yeah, no, no, not tonight. This, no, okay. no, no, no. I'm just saying for real. We we have to vote this tonight, right? So we don't. Okay, okay. This is due, right? We, the, the warrants are, are due, I think, on the, <clears throat> on the second, right? So today is the 27th. We don't meet again. So right. okay. unless we're going to have another meeting, we're going to vote on this tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I agree. Christine, Christine, can you have? Sorry to jump everybody, but can you have Carrie take out the million dollars and show what that max tax rate would be that you were sure. mentioning? Because I see Ray's point of, of leveling it out. If we totally didn't do a million dollars, where where are we going to be? I think Carrie could do probably do that pretty quick. Yep, she could. Let me. Should I stop sharing? Am I still sharing? You are. You're, you're yes. sharing, but sharing. But Christine, before you stop sharing, oh, um, okay. Carrie Carrie is probably already working that uh, magic in the background. <clears throat> but to Ray's question, would it make sense to amend this? motion that you're, this article you're proposing to say, yeah. <clears throat> to determine whether a town will vote to transfer from free cash the sum of uh, 1 million, or say, uh, to transfer from free cash the sum of 1 million 
so much of which to go to reducing the tax and so much of which to go to the stabilization fund. No. Because this is no. a this is no. an article. Two articles. Two articles. Oh. There's Control another one. article that we're okay, going to talk about. Okay, but forgetting about, about the article language, what what is your point, Amrit? So forgetting about the article language, is there what's your point? The, if we phrase point is that we want to make a trade-off between how much we want to use to reduce the tax today and how much we want to put to stabilization for the future. Can we just build that into these two articles oh, okay. such that we can decide at town meeting, um, put a million dollars in this and a million dollars in that and lower the amount at town meeting and we're done. That, mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually accommodated here because it says, or any oh. other sum. So if we have a conversation yeah. between now and then, right, then right, we, right. Can we can change lower the bias, We can do that. It, okay, fair enough. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now that, I'm going to. That other sum is not to be argued at town meeting, correct? It'll That's be in my, motion. No, we can we can, we can move a lower number if we have if we have finance committee meetings where we decide a different right. number. We could move a lower number. We don't have to. A, a citizen could do a motion too, though, right? Correct? A citizen could do a motion. Yeah. We can okay. move a lower we number. Have... We cannot move a higher number. That's right. correct. Yeah. All right, right. Uh, Peggy. Yes, just very briefly. I think um, I think this is an excellent balance. Obviously, there's a million ways that we can slice this, uh, you know, turkey. Um, I think it's an excellent balance. Don't forget that we will have citizens that feel like they are paying upfront for the middle school and they will raise this because if we raise taxes too much now, you know, you're burdening people up front. We've already heard that argument. Um, the other point I want to make is, you know, next year we're going to be having this discussion and then some if free cash doesn't start to build back up. So next year we may not have any free cash um, or a lot less. Uh, so those are two totally separate points. I'm in favor of the articles, the way they are written. Let's do it now. I don't think we should increase the stabilization number. I think we'll get some blowback on that. And uh, I just think we all need to have our our helmets on for next year. Okay, thank you. Lois. Yeah, I, um, I, I basically agree with, it, with, with what Peggy just said. I think one of the things to keep in mind is the timing issue. Um, we, the reason we're doing, building the stabilization fund is in anticipation of a hit that's gonna come in a couple of years. Um, so I think the way this is structured now is we're balancing that. We're using a million dollars now to avoid a, 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 a hike up this year more than, we're, than we are comfortable with. But we've got some time on the stabilization fund. We don't need all of that money for the next fiscal year, or even the year after that. I don't remember the exact date, but it, it's at least three years out or four years out before the, we, we get into that. Um, that point in the curve where we've got the multiple debt payments and you have that bump. So I don't think we need to be overfunding the stabilization fund now. It's, it's, it's risky. I think uh, Peggy's point is well taken that uh, if we don't have a lot of free cash available, we could find ourselves in a situation where it's hard to get to the 5 million. But I think based on what we know now, what we can project, the decisions we're making are prudent. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the way we've structured it now with a million dollars for free cash and the level we've talked about for um, into the stabilization fund for this year. Thank you, Lois. Dee. Yeah, just to um, tag along on what Lois was saying, I have a question for Carrie, which is when will we need um, the money for the stabilization fund or to be using the stabilization fund? What, at what fiscal year <coughs> will we have to, to um, have the money available and how much? Well, so we had that at the- uh, In our report at the the meeting. Presentation. Yeah. So it's yeah. like so we, were, we were planning on using stabilization fund um, I think 25 through 28. Or 25 like through 28. 
Yeah. Yes. Right. 25, so when does 25 start? Do we, is that like next year when we do, are doing the 24 budget? 25 starts July 2024. Yeah. But we have, we really, this last bit that we're trying to fund is, is for the, you know, for the last couple of years. So 2027, 2028. Oh, so you don't okay. have to have it all at, at 2025. Okay. Dean, so. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Dean. Sorry, I had to unmute because I was sneezing. Um, <laughs> we know. So, so <laughs> we I heard think, you. Better, so sneezing, better sneezing than choking. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So um, I think the I think one of the points that I'd like to just bring to the forefront is that. In, in the use of this annual drawdown of free yeah. cash, fundamentally, we overtaxed people in the prior year, which mm -hmm. generated operational savings, and maybe we underestimated or conservatively estimated our revenue projections. And so free cash came about, which we must have overtaxed people a little. So in the father, in the next year, we have a give back. We say, okay, well, we some free cash was generated. Let's just reduce the taxes in this year by taking it out of free cash and reducing. So it's as close to an equitable way of using the free cash to reduce taxes as possible. So I, I'm completely in favor of having a, a better bias towards uh, the 1 million reduction and only a half a million for the far out future reduction. So that's my, I'm, I'm all in for that. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. John. Yes, agree with uh, with uh, you know Dean's comments. I've I've often thought free cash is a bit of a misnomer. It's really a, a an accumulated budget surplus, right? Right. The the town yeah. runs a surplus every year. The difference goes into free cash, and yeah. So um, actually, I was kind of thinking, as we've been contributing a a, a, a static dollar amount, one million dollars, to a rising budget and a rising tax bill, the impact has actually been diminishing over time. So. The creative solution would be to index it to the increase in the budget, but I know that's asking too much. So anyway, just in support of Dean's comments. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, good. So um, on the first Warren article, which is with, with respect to the, um, should, I, should I, we'll do them separately. So let me, I'll, I'll do this one first. So with respect to the million dollars for uh, tax support from free cash, I will take a motion to, um, Allow me to allow me to go forward with that as a Warren article from FinCom. Okay, I, I move. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Then I will take a vote. So Chris Reynolds, yes. Uh, John Hickling. Yes. Mary Hartman. Yes. Peggy Briggs. Yes. D. Ortner. Yes. Ray Andrews. Yes. Amrith Kumar. Yes. Greg Goriello. Yes. Lois Wassoff. Yes. Eric Dahlberg. Yes. Dean Banfield. Yes. Brian Taylor. Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. So that's the first one. Let me go to the second one. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to screen share again if I can. Uh, uh -oh. Are we? Are we ready for a motion right on this? Well, I wanted to show it to you. Um, okay. I don't know why I can't now, of course. Oh, hold on. Let's see. If I go to this, here we go. Share screen. Uh, this one. No. This one. I want to go to. some reason I have too many things up. There you go. Can you see it? Yep. That was the previous motion. Oh, that's the previous one. Oh, yeah. yeah, for some reason. Oh, it is. There we go. Here we go. Okay. There you go. Good, good, good. Okay. All righty. So take a read on that. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, just, just one, just one change. 
Is it normal in St. Conquer to use the word to determine? I think it's normally to see. Nope, I think no. that's the language. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, though. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And I think we'll take a vote. Uh, Chris Reynolds, I'm um, yes. John Hickling? Yes. Amrith Kumar? Yes. Mary Hartman? Yes. Peggy Briggs? Yes. D. Ortner? Yes. Ray Andrews? Yes. Greg Gariello? Yes. Lois Wasoff? Yes. Eric Dahlberg? Yes. Dean Banfield? Yes. Brian Taylor? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. We're we're uh, unanimous on that. Okay, so let's we see. We have a little time on that one. Yeah, we did. Thank thankfully we did, which is great. Thank you guys. Uh, let's see here. Now we're going to talk about the Warren articles for the other Warren articles. So, um, am I still screen sharing? No, I'm not. I'm good. Okay. So let's talk about those. Uh, so there was a preview meeting. And let me take you through what we've got. So, uh, so from, re from a recurring standpoint, um, there's uh, uh, the operating budgets, the capital budgets. As I mentioned, the high school is going to come forward with 800, about 800,000 uh, for the ring road paving and lighting. So you'll see that um, coming forward. Uh, we discussed affordable housing. So at this point, I think that money is going to be supplied. It will still be, the request will still be for half a million, but I believe it will be requested through the ARPA uh, funding. FinCom is going to have the two items we just talked about, stabilization and tax support. There will again be um, uh, an amount for seniors means, the seniors means tested exception, exemption, I should say, to uh, property tax. So that's something where they're waiting for, um, I think, some state approval. So every year we have to agree on what can be an amount that can be used for that. I don't know. I don't remember the amount, Carrie, but I'm thinking it's it was maybe 100, 125,000. Yeah, it's in that ballpark. It's around that ballpark. So that's a recurring item. We've seen that one before. Um, the Committee on um, uh, Community Preservation is going to come forward with the 2.2 million and and Peggy's going to give us an update on that in a bit but just keep that in your mind so 2.2 million out of CPC uh, the others um, so uh, uh, many of these are smaller or they don't at least initially seem to have a dollar impact but uh, let's talk about it and see if there are others that you think we we need to weigh in on so um, in no particular order. So Kerry was interested in hiring an outside advisor to um, work on the OPEB trust assets. So to advise on the OPEB trust assets. So there's an article on that. Uh, the the uh, historic uh, committee is looking to designate, I believe it's uh, portions of 2A as a scenic road, again, I asked whether that had any significant maintenance impact. The answer was no. I then heard a later discussion with DPW that said it might have some, but I'll, I'll we can try. Whoever's got DPW, is that you, Greg? Who's got DPW as a, as a assignment? Anybody here? Somebody does. Anyway, I'm going to ask someone to follow up on that one, but I think it doesn't have much money impact. Uh, the personnel board has some bylaws that they're looking to adjust with respect to benefits around um, vacation and leave. I didn't hear any financial impact on that in particular. And generally what we've said on the personnel board items is it's really covered in our town uh, budget uh, authorization or, or, or uh, advocacy, you know, when we say action on that. So we don't act independently on personnel board bylaws. Um, the reformatory trail study. So there is a citizen group asking for 75,000 to do a study on um, this component of uh, a, tra a trail in the town. I guess there, there's a uh, proposal that, and I'm going to get the town wrong, I think it's Sudbury it wants to connect into the Bruce Freeman rail tail. And this is one of the ways they could hook in. 
And there's a question as to whether it should be paved or not paved. Have I got that right, Mary? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. It's, okay, I'm sorry. It's very complicated. It's okay. Very, but it's, it's Bedford and it's... Oh, it's Bedford. Okay, it's, I'm sorry. It's, it's very complicated, but I do think we should keep an eye on it. And I do think okay. we should come up with a recommendation. Is, is the source of funds for that coming from free cash? Is that the request coming out of no. free cash? No, no, he really he has not identified it clearly. I mean, yeah. Carrie, as I mentioned earlier, there might be a an article or there might be money that was encumbered in 2018. But the man who's actually proposing this is not clear on where okay. he's getting the funding yet. So I think we should watch it and and make a recommendation at town meeting. If, okay. So Chris, we might happen. even want to have that at our hearing. Okay. It, my, John. Sorry, just on that very topic, I think it's probably contingent upon what Bedford votes to do uh, with respect to paving and tunneling the portion of that trail that leads to the Concord uh, border. So we might we might check on the Bedford uh, developments as well. Well, the money is actually just for a feasibility study to answer yeah. all these questions. So yeah. so you might be right, John, and we'll find that out. So the money is a feasibility study. It's it's controversial right okay. now. Okay. Okay. Fair yes. enough. All right. It's so just, that we one... might want to just determine whether we have anything to study for feasibility. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. All and right. it's so... more of a definitely more of a select board issue than a FinCom issue. Mm -hmm. Well, but there's money involved. Yeah. That's a good point, though. Or there might be. There will be. All right. Well, let's enough. let's keep it on our list, and then yeah. let, we'll learn yeah. some more, and we'll come back to that one good. as to whether we want to do it or not. But it's so it's it's a tentative. I'll put that as a tentative on my list. Good. Uh, then a citizen was interested in adding rank choice voting. Uh, again, not our purview. Uh, mm -hmm. and there was another citizen who was looking to ban synthetic turf. Again, I don't see that as being within our purview. And uh, there was another citizen asking for a home rule petition with respect to charging for checkout, checkout bags at retail uh, establishments in the town. So those were the... Um, those were the items that I noted. I don't know, Mary, you were there. Did I forget anything big here? Those are the ones that I came up with. The only other thing is the scenic by bylaw was um, the roads in Concord. Not there was one for the roads in Concord, not Route Two A. It's not Route Two A. Oh, I thought it was. Oh. I thought it was. Oh, okay. No, it's for Sorry. nine roads in Concord, but um, um, okay. the Two A, I think, is what they're going to be looking at next. But for now, it's okay. nine roads within Concord. But that's. Okay. But whether that's in our purview or not, I'm not much. Not, oh, I'm gonna have whoever's in charge of DPW is gonna check that out to make sure it isn't something that drives maintenance. That's all I was Got trying it. to figure Got out. Was okay. It so. Yep. okay, so those are the items. So um, let's go to Peggy. I have a question before we oh, move sorry. to the next I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, Dean. Yeah, so I have two questions on that. Yep. On the high school 800,000 plus or whatever for the ring yes. road, yep. is there any parking involved in that? No. no. They've taken that off the table because the thing that hung it up before was, you know, they were yes, back and forth right. about expanding parking on the lot. I should have mentioned that. Yes, right. So they yeah, they right. just want to get the road paved. Okay, that's that. Yep. And lighting. It includes lighting. And lighting. Too. Yep. Yeah. And, and the other and, one is is the one that Carrie has for an advisor on the OPEB trust. Yep. Why is that not just part of the budgeting process for the finance department, Carrie? That's all. So, Why do we need a special article for this? Yeah, so um, we we need an article to appropriate any expenditures from the um, OPEB trust fund, including expenditures for for actuary and okay and anything okay. like that. Okay. And town town council did review the legislation and determined that specifically the hiring of an investment manager for the trust fund requires town meeting action fair enough i i just just felt like okay it just seemed like a budget, like let's go hire an investment I'll, I'll, advisor i'll just say i'm shocked we don't already have one really and i hope it goes on the consent agenda <laughs> okay okay all right good so let's hear from peggy on what uh, our friends at cpc have been up to and what's on their list all right i am going to try something I've never tried before, which is sharing my screen. Christine, if this is going to be about Oak Bluffs or Hassabet Bluff, do I need to read my disclosure first? Um, I don't 
you can if you want to. <laughs> oh, you, your call. You know, you know what it is. Um, so yeah. as long as you're okay. But let's with it. let's keep going, and then when we get to ask it, we will, we are going to talk about acid reflux. So uh, you, well, you know, you might as well read it while we're getting. Is, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. You did it, Peggy. You did. Oh my it. God! <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. All right, I'm going to make it Excellent. a little bigger. Look at that. Look at you. It's great when I have the control of my own mouse. Okay. Um, so this is the Community Preservation Committee. Um, the article, which they have already voted on, um, is pretty much identical. It, you know, it's the simpler um, display, but it's basically columns. Um, excuse me, columns. Yeah, this is basically. Uh, exactly what the article is going to say. Okay, so I'm just going to go really, really quickly through this. Um, well, uh, let, let me just start at the start with the bottom line. Um, now we lose the top. So the, we've got the uh, reserve prior year balance, current year revenues, and total amount. So you can see a couple of them are using prior year balances. Um, the total amount that we have for uh, fiscal 23 fund revenue is right here, 1815. Prior year is 237. And uh, we are using some money from the land acquisition reserve account for a total of 2.15. Four million dollars. Okay, um, so we're pretty. Uh, I, I I tried to I tried to reach out uh, verbally to the coordinator today. I didn't go to the meeting, uh, but I'm pretty sure we're pretty mu we're wiping out pretty much everything they have. Mm -hmm. um, here's the split. Um, just for everyone's you know a reminder, we have to do ten percent each community historic and open space. Uh, so we're meeting those numbers and uh, uh, the high numbers this year is on open space, honestly. His, his, historically, it's been historic. Um, <laughs> right, right. Okay, good. What, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, just take uh, us through the items and, and don't yeah. get into a big discussion on ACIBIT because we have something planned on that. Okay. Uh, this one uh, was 100% funded, no problems there at all. Uh, the Concord Home for the Aged on Walden Street, that was, request was 150, they uh, approved 135. You can see the amount requested in that column. Um, historic Preservation, the Old Manse, 100% funded. Um, Right Tavern, this one, uh, this one's been going on for quite a while. This is certainly not their first request. Probably won't be their last, but if you've driven by that building, it's uh, it really needed it. We funded most of that. Uh, completely funded the oral history project at Concord Library. I don't think that's the first request. Um, Assabet River, I'll skip over for request. Um, Junction Village open space. Um, so this is, I'm just going to read a little bit about this. This is going to be a multi-year project to create passive open space on six and a half acres along the Assabet River as it stretches behind the uh, prison property, MCI, perpendicular to the rail trail. Um, so that I'm not sure physically, I think this is, you go up behind the prison and as you approach West Concord, the Assabet comes in there and there's um, uh, Neshoba Brook and whatnot. And so it must be somewhere in that general uh, area. You're talking about I, Junction I, Village? Yeah, I about? think it, yeah, it's gonna be- Junction next, Village next is next right off of Commonwealth yeah. behind, you know, you could- um, Yeah. 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 That's what she said. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is um, remember when they they did Junction Village, right? There was there was some part of the deal, right? There was this land that was going to be used for 
right. the development, but there was always going to be this open space. And I think, what are they going to do with it? Are, are they going to put something on it or is it just, are they cleaning it up? I don't What's the 254? Do you know, Peggy? Well, it's funding for um, passive open space on six and a half acres along the Aspet River as it stretches behind the MCI property perpendicular to the rail trail uh, project scope involves a multi-year process. Uh, that was a little heads up to me that won't be the final request. Okay. That will begin with a general design, invasive plant removal and evolve into a developed parkland with interpretive signage, a pollinator meadow, mm. gathering spaces and public art. Okay. Well, Dean might know what a pollinator meadow is better than any of us, but um, <laughs> okay. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a beekeeper down the block from me, so wow. it's all good. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So okay. they cut that, they cut that back a little bit. Um, oh no, they. Uh, yeah, it's like they gave them all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. And then um, rail trail. Those, that number's way down from previous. Asabet River Pedestrian Bridge. Um, oh, that's the what one. What is that for? Yeah, what is that for? Okay, continue. The Town of Concord, it's town request, three, 300, um, to continue development of architectural plans, structural and construction drawings that meet the need for mass dot and final permitting needed for construction of the Assabet River pedestrian bridge. So I am. Is it, it connects to Baker Ave? Is it that this one? Is, uh, Mary can talk to this. I one. Can, this is my neighborhood. Okay. So right. this, this I am not sure exactly where it is. So pro, Mary. Yeah, this is a bridge that would go over the Assabet River and connect what is now, oh. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. where. The well, it goes off. between Concord Green and, and right. like, you well, know, actually, Concord yeah, Pharmacy, right? Kind of. And it connects the village of Concord Green, uh, Concord, West Concord, to yeah. all the businesses be over there where the Harvard Medical is and the um, Emerson, yeah. all those buildings and the, the, the Baker um, Ave. So Baker, the whole Baker Ave. The Baker Ave extension. Baker that, okay. whole, that whole industrial part there, that Baker okay. Ave extension. Now yeah. we have a pedestrian bridge going over to the village center. And they think that would be great because people who maybe take the train then could be easily getting over to that park, to, to that well, to Baker Ave. Is that part, is that part well, of the- And, and for lunch. For yeah, lunch, they're, they're right? yeah, trying to, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. so people right now are walking on the railroad tracks. Yes. Yeah. doing, so they're- Yes, they are. <laughs> That's not good. And, and, and well, never mind. Yeah, I know, don't say anything. <laughs> Speaking of your neighborhood, Mary, so do people from uh, Concord Green, right? Anyway. No, um, they drive. They drive. <laughs> <laughs> or, they get, or, they get, or they get their daughter to drive them. Right. So, uh, <laughs> um, right. Yeah, my mother lives there. That's <laughs> right. Uh, okay. All right. And rec department, strategic plan. So that's okay. it. There we go. I'm, okay, and ask about we're going to talk about separately. So, is there anything on this list, uh, Peggy, that uh, was controversial, or uh, you know, is is or is there anything that you're uncomfortable with on this list? No. Okay. All right. So, no. ask about. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The only thing I'll say is there was one uh, treatment and prevention of cyanobacteria in White Pond that was oh, denied. Yes. It was thirty six thousand. Yeah. Right. Uh, there was another white pond one that was withdrawn. Um, restore white pond shore drive, pedestrian access, Dover Property Owner Association for 30,000 that was withdrawn. So, you know, those might have been. I think there was a good dialogue between the folks who were requesting that and the town yeah. Uh, yeah. in terms yep. of where the right dollars for the budget would be and so forth. So I think that got resolved. Am I right, Carrie, on that? I think everybody's okay with that now. I don't think that's going to come back. I'm hoping. I no. guess the only one I question on here, and you know, I haven't been party to the conversation, so I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, is that the Junction Village land that we are going to have this uh, senior, senior uh, facility built on was basically deeded to us for zero dollars, and we're spending 
a quarter yeah. of a million here to develop parkland. And what, from what I can tell from you, Peggy, there's going to be more requests coming down the pipe. This is a lot of money to develop parkland. Who's, who's going to use this park? I just yeah. don't really, you know, that's all. Yeah. That's my only question. It's a lot right. of money. It's a good question. All right. Well, right the, we're going to keep right. that question on our list then. The so maybe, just, <laughs> we may need more money. I mean, yeah, I mean, that that one. The town is spending a lot of money to develop a park across this across Commonwealth right. Avenue. Right. right. From yes. this. And we're going to spend another quarter of a million to develop. It just seems like a lot of parkland being developed over here for a lot of money. Um, right. good, yeah. good point. I, I uh, Maya Culpa, did not go to you know all the meetings that the CPC had. So I, I don't know the answer to that, Dean, but I think at the hearing, um, well, I, I let me dig into it a little more. All right. Okay, that'll be good. Fine. Dee, yeah. I see you trying to get in. Do you know something or? Uh, I was just curious as to why we're discussing it tonight because we have the hearing coming up, right? right. Well, because I just want to get the committee educated on what's on the list. That's all. Oh, okay. I just okay. want to, you know, I want people to get familiar with what are we going to be talking about. Yeah, this is perfect because then we know what to ask questions about. And, and I'll dig in a little more uh, before the hearing. Yeah, we're not making any decision on it. We're just, just we're just, I wanted yeah. people to get updated. Yep. Okay, so um, there is an item on here, which is a combination of um, open land and affordable housing. So I'll let uh, Amrith make your statement and we'll have a discussion then about uh, Acibet Bluff. Thank you. Um, so I live near the property that is the subject of the Acibet Bluff de development. So. For that reason, I spoke with the State Ethics Commission and I filed a disclosure of conflict of interest. I do not believe that where I live is gonna impact my vote on this subject. And I don't believe that it will have any impact on my ability to discharge my duties on the finance committee. The town moderator has reviewed this and has permitted me to continue to participate in discussions on this subject. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So um, Ray is gonna take us through um, well, I tell you what, uh, how do I want to do this? Um, let me do a little mm -hmm. bit of background and then I'm going to have Ray jump in because this is this is a complicated one because it's, it's got two, two different aspects to it. One part is, in fact, the primary part of it is open land request and the other is um, uh, related to affordable housing. So, uh, Let's see, we have a schedule that I think we can show. Let's see. We have a map or where, wherever this is. I don't really have a Yeah, it's off it. Old Marlboro. It's Upton Road. It's right behind Upton Road. Upland. Upland, Upland. sorry. Yeah, okay. There we yep. go. Okay. Is this this landlocked? Also, is it also yeah, borders kind of on landlocked. Yeah, kind of is. It's on, the, it's on the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail along one side. And Marlboro Road is the primary access. There's a two-family house there now. And then there's a very small um, frontage on Upland Road. Okay. But most of it, and, it, and it's it's, um, it's a more or less triangular piece. Uh, one side of it is frankly the Acevet River. It is a relatively steep decline from the height of land to the Acevet River. Right. And so Ray, can you just give a little background on um, how this came to the town and who the parties are and uh, talk through the price and the schedule that we put together so folks at least have a, a sure. picture of the economics? Sure. Uh, well, it's D. Giovanni owns the family, owns the land, uh, owns the property and offer it to the town. And from what I've heard, uh, $2.8 million is a, um, attractive price for <laughs> for this piece of land. It does have two road frontages, although the one on Upland Road is very small. It's about Ray, seven uh, acres. Excuse me, who's sharing their screen? I can put the uh, Google map up. Oh, okay, I am, but I can take it down. I, I take it down, sure. then I can yeah. put my... Oh, look the, at you, Peggy. Look at you going wild with the show. Hey, you know, I mean, this is awesome, right? <laughs> going wild. We created a monster. I, I was just about... I was just, trolling around in Concord's GIS map. So we're all on the same page here. It's fine. Right. You see it? No. No? Nope. No. 
<laughs> Peggy, you were coming strong, and then you just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm oh, I don't know what to say about that. Hey, you know, it's just so embarrassing. No, just just look for the be in the Zoom screen and look for the there share. You go. Oh, there, there you go. it is. There it is. Oh, Peggy. All right. Uh, awesome. Okay, back. Yeah, back away. Oh. There we oh, go. There, there, the there you go. There you yep. go. Good. Right. 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 Yep. Back away. That's good. Yes. That's okay. Too far. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. There's the little house. Yeah, you can zoom in. A little, well, the people <laughs> get a the sense of where it is. There's the real trail. Yep. Right. Yep. 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 All right. Everybody got a picture of it? No. 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 Go in. That's zoom. fine. That's fine. Here's I think. The, here's the I'll river. Okay. Yeah. Can you outline the trail? Outline the property, Peggy. I don't know how to do that. I mean, okay. Well, no, no, I'm just saying, move I mean, your mouse around the, you know. what we think is the border of the property. Yeah, it's that area in there. Yep. yep. All the way down to, yes, right. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's about and then that's the it. House. Much, yeah. Peggy, right. point, a, out, point out the house that's already there. There you go. That's it. That's the two family house. <laughs> that's right. That's where the, that's the job. front of John Old, Old Marlboro Road. So zoom out again a little bit, and we just get a picture of it. The whole, the parcel A, so there's, it's seven acres total, and, yep, there's a little dog leg that goes over to Pine Street also, yeah, right there, yep, behind those houses. Um, so, right, starting from the two-family house that's existing, there's a little, they're going to make a one-acre um, plot, a parcel A will be that house, and and a few and uh, up to three other uh, affordable units to be built sometime in the future. Go, it sort of goes along um, Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. And the rest of it is about five acres that is, um, I'm sorry, about six acres that is um, the uh, conservation land, conservation and open land. So yeah, 2.8 million. Then we can go back to the spreadsheet Okay, so is this can, wet? You, you stop I'm sorry. sharing and I'll share. Is it, wet, is it wetland or upland? No, it's really high. I mean, you're if you if you're right up close to the river, you're still I don't know fifty feet above the water. Yeah, it's okay. a bluff. It's a bluff. Yeah, it's a bluff, right? It's a bluff. Right. It's, it's a bluff. bluff. That's right. That's why they call it a bluff. Yeah, right. But, yeah, it's a bluff. All right. So let me. Yeah, the other side of the river is low to the water, but that this side is quite high. That's right. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is really a very nice spot. I've just hiked in there and once, yeah. but it's very nice. Okay. So yeah, um, I think really the numbers here that are important is down the bottom, the source of funds. Yeah. CPC uh, said they would uh, commit for a million dollars, 300,000 of it would be um, for affordable housing and 700,000 would be for, let me just check, make sure I'm not making okay. stuff up. 300,000 for affordable housing and 700,000 for the open space. That's right. Uh, but a million that's, total. That's right. And uh, Concord uh, Land Conservation Trust and Sudbury Valley trustees have combined. I don't know how that relationship works, but uh, on the sheet I've seen on this sheet, um, the uh, their combination is a million two. And uh, Concord Municipal Affordable Housing Trust has committed 650,000. Thank you, town meeting three times. Um, and Concord Housing Foundation has uh, committed $50,000 again to the purchase. So right, that's, right. A, I'm right. sorry. And then, and oh, this, that's 2.9. And the other 100,000 is his transa uh, transaction costs over top of it. 2.8 for the purchase plus 100,000 for transaction cost. Okay. Question? Yep. Yeah, I, I, Ray, I was at a meeting today and I think the amount that the Municipal Housing Trust is putting up is only 500. So that means that there's a million four that needs to come from the other sources that you've got listed here. Right. Yeah, that was, a, that was the old number that I heard uh, but this number came from Liz Rust uh, yesterday morning. Huh. So, so maybe your number is more recent. And no, um, no, if you spoke with Liz yesterday, I okay. 
That's funny. Yeah, they, they it, was, said, it was 500,000 originally. Um, mm -hmm. And, but anyway, it's been kicked up to 650. Okay, that's good. And, um, okay, so Ray, how and, much? And relevant, Where's the fundraising piece, right? So when you say total yeah. from each source, right? There's a piece of this that isn't isn't real yet, right? Right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, there's yeah, there's two pieces that aren't real. I think one is a um, the Concord Land Conservation Trust and Sudbury Valley trustees said they would put in a million two. I don't know if they if their checkbook would sustain that tomorrow, but this is not going to happen um, quite that soon, um, and the uh, at the bottom if you look down the page if someone can scroll uh is that peggy scrolling whoever's scrolling or whoever's screen sharing yeah scroll yeah, down a little bit my, yeah. <laughs> right that's it department of uh, natural resources has applied for a grant for five hundred thousand dollars from the land and water conservation funds yep. and if they receive that it would reduce if they receive that or some lesser amount i guess it would reduce funds from Land Conservation Trust and Sudbury Valley trustees. So those are two. Um, oh, those are on the wish list, I guess. Not those are not um, you know funds in the pocket in the hand. Right. Right. So CPC has yeah. the million. The um, the the affordable housing trust, the new trust that has the money that we we collected from free cash for the last three years. So right. they have the 650 and we're going to show you a roll forward of that account so we can see what's in there. So we know we have the million 650. I, I'm assuming that the 50,000 is available. It's that million two that's uh, to, right. you know, TBD, right? So if they can get half a million on the grant and if they can do some fundraising, they can get there. Um, is there any, I, I looked at the MOU that you sent me, um, Ray, I didn't see any time limit on it. Now that was a draft, but is this right. seller, it, is he sort of saying, you know, you can, you have a year to get the money or is there, is there some deadline by which we need to uh, have the funds? Yeah, the MOU said that they expected it, it would be uh, consummated. The purchase would happen uh, by July of this year, July of 22. Um, so, yeah. Okay. I, so they expect yeah, they would. It, I don't know if that's. Um, I don't know if that's. Yeah, the CC, CDC would be the ones would be the agent who would buy it, and then they would um, transfer. Uh, well, they they would uh, what, transfer the the uh, parcel A, presumably to a third party, or they may transfer it to a third party to develop, to build and lease or build and sell to right. eligible to afford to eligible persons okay so let's talk about that for a minute so this 2.9 million which is the purchase price for the land and the existing house uh does not include the construction costs associated with the three other affordable housing units that would be put in there so those would right. have to, that would be, have to be paid for separately Right. right. That's somebody. right. It wouldn't include yeah. any renovation of the house. Uh, right. And I know the C8 the Concord Housing Foundation did promise to contribute 50000 to renovation, but no one even knows if that's going to be needed or if that's going to be even a tiny fraction of what's needed. So this does not include any money for even, um, you know, improvements to the land or anything. This is just simply the purchase of the property. Right. Okay. So I wanted to make sure you guys, any, any, uh, I see Lois has a question. Let's see if we, I'm going to stop. Should I, can I stop sharing or should I leave this up? Stop sharing. Okay. You can stop sharing. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Now I can see you. I, okay, Lois. Yeah, my question really has, and maybe this is answered in the MOU, I don't know, right? But um, how is the ownership structure going to do? Is it, so the land gets acquired from the Di Giovannis. Some big portion of it is going to be restricted as open space. Who actually owns the property? Is it going to be sold to a developer who would then be responsible for building the the housing units subject to a conservation restriction that is held by the two conservation groups? Do, how is yeah. all that structured? Because that has to do with how those. Um, I mean, I, it's a matter of some interest to me, but it also has to do with. Um, 
how those costs are going to get handled post transaction and whether or not there's actual talent exposure for some of those um, those renovation costs and maintenance costs and costs for um, dealing with the property, you know, creating a park. Yeah. We're looking at expenses about creating parks now. Yeah, the MOU um, law is splits it into two parcels. Okay, so that's not the surprising. land is independent of the affordable housing piece. Okay. And the, it looks to me, and Ray, you can tell me if I got this right, that the, the land, although it's acquired by this, uh, this committee, would then be transferred to the town. I think okay. the town would end up ho holding the land. and they, Holding they, that's all the right. land, including the no. restricted portion? No, no, no. no. Yeah. Just, just the piece that's related to open space, and that would have a conservation restriction put on it. Okay, all right, that makes sense. I believe sense. that's how it's structured. Is that right? Correct. That makes sense. The, the MOU, I, I certainly, no reason not to just send the MOU to the whole committee, to the whole FinCon, sure. I think. Yeah. Um, I should, should have done that. Um, yeah, I think this MOU says it'll the CHDC, the Concord Housing Development Corporation, will acquire it and will transfer the six acres to the town for a nom for a you know a nominal fee, probably a dollar or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, but then the town will have the responsibility for the expenses for okay. anything they want to do to make that proper conservation slash open space. Okay, and that's, and that's then they will have the they, it says they may transfer part that was parcel B, which is the open space according to this document. And parcel A is the how the one acre roughly for affordable housing. And they may transfer that parcel to um, someone that doesn't say anything about who um, you know, the one or more par uh, parties to uh ideally to build up to three houses okay. so i don't i don't would be condominiums also, or right um could be any units i think could be multi could be a, one multi-unit uh piece or it could be three townhouses or i don't know yeah and i and lost, they, I lost yeah. track and of the, to the total acreage seven, on this site seven acres. roughly seven and um, are there restrictions set out in the MOU about does the housing have to be affordable housing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's the intent. Right. However, it says so. So I don't know how. Maybe I'm naive, but if I'm a developer, normally affordable housing like this gets developed as part of a larger, you know, deal, and right. then you say so many of the units are going to be affordable. Right. In this case, all of them would be affordable. It, it, and there's only four of you. That'll be a pretty hard sell. So the language in the MOU says if they can't do that, if they can't find somebody, mm -hmm. then they, they might uh, end up selling that component of the land and the monies would come back to uh, CPC and the others who had contributed. So they've left, uh, right. I think, an appropriate valve there in case they cannot complete that development, if they could not find a developer who was willing to do it or develop it themselves however other ways they could and, and they could resell it for any other purpose yes yeah 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 because yeah. once you once you've created a lot that has a lot of conservation land behind it that lot has some real value mm. yes mm. yeah so right. Yeah. right right yeah. although it's frontage on a, on a big road so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i take true. your point i take your point yeah, yeah. okay well, that road, the homes on that road have been all torn down and biggered up already. They so, have. Yes, they have. Uh, yep. Uh, right. They could build a pretty big home with three or four units and it wouldn't be out of place anymore. So, mm. okay. I have a, I have a yeah, comment. Mary. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, I just want to say that this has been great information, but really the only thing that the Finance Committee can weigh in on is do we approve of or do we recommend affirmative action on the CPCs? recommendation right. of the million right. dollars. The spending right. for the affordable housing will be done by the affordable housing trust. Right. That we, you know, we don't we don't really have anything right. to do with that. Unless um, Mary, unless, unless they don't raise the million too. <laughs> and then and they come back and they what's gonna back. happen. Right. So I, I, I suspect <laughs> if that doesn't happen that they'll come back. So I that's why I wanted you guys to know know about it, right? Be be knowledgeable of what this what the deal is. So the, so, CP, the CPC is putting up a million. 
um, it's just another committee I sat on. So every year they will, they track it very closely, they, you know, and they will not spend that money until everything's in place and it's ready to go. And, um, you know, there has to be an application to the CPC for the money at the time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this, I just did a, a quick calculation. So it's residence B, which is a half acre zoning, uh, could be 14 homes as of right. That's about no. two. Seven year? acres times. Oh, no, no, no. no the no, six the, acres are going to be. Only one restricted. acre would transfer It's just one back. acre that's part of the deal. Yeah. No, the, no, no, the total property is no. seven acres. Right? You know, but I know what yeah. Peggy's saying. Peggy's saying that the DG Giovanni's, in theory, yes. could break it up. Oh, no. yes, 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 no. yes. No, they and can't. Know, 14 homes. No. The, the property it's has, because right. it's on the Assabet River, there's a setback of yeah, what, the river 200 front. feet from the river. So feet so river from that the would, yeah, that would impact it. Probably you're down to four or five acres. It would actually be buildable. There's, a, okay. there's two but barriers, two buffers acres, along the river. But even at four or five acres, that's, um, and they would probably do a PRD or something. But anyway, you oh. know, it's, it's, you know, five or 10 units of housing market rate uh I, i'm just saying i'm just looking at the three million dollar purchase price and let's so call it three hundred thousand per developable yeah lot. That, you know that's not that's that's a good price yeah, in soccer today. yeah it is but it's not that bad i was yep. sort of thinking but you know it's it's a uh i don't think they're I don't think it's absolutely top dollar. Okay, all right. I'm. I want to move if we can. If uh, I see some more hands up, but I. I really want to move. I want to move into affordable housing if so I can. I, I lowered my hand. We can. Okay, D. D. You've got something. Yeah, I just wondered if um, in the MOU, if that information about if they can't find a developer, then it's going to be transferred into something else. If that's a bit misleading um when we when this comes to town meeting or however it's going to be approached um that's my comment i don't know if if anyone has any additional information i'd love to get a copy of the mou to see really what it does say yep we can get you that okay good okay so I want to move from Assabet now into just affordable housing. So a little background on this. So if you remember, you know, in the um, in the summer we talked about the topics. This was one that was high on my list because I felt like we kept having um, discussions really at this time of year, even later, right before town meeting about uh, some request for funding on affordable housing, and we didn't have a framework by which to evaluate them. And um, so that was my frustration as a, as a committee member. So it's something I wanted to work on. I think I told you, I, um, I had a conversation with Keith Bergman, who's the chair of the uh, Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, the newly established trust that is the depository now, or the repository for the funds that were collected from free cash. So they're working on a set of guidelines that I think will be helpful to this committee. Uh, there's also um, a couple of other updates that I wanted to give you with respect to affordable housing. So one of the things that is really going to be helpful, I think, in thinking through this issue is what's our inventory and what's our goal, right? So if we, if we talk about affordable housing, what do we really mean? Is it diversity of housing? Is it, is it really affordable housing? What is it? How many? What percentage of our stock do we really want there? Is it just 40B? Is it beyond 40B? So these are discussions that I think are ongoing with the select board and with this, this, uh, this group to come up with the proper guidelines. And I think that'll be helpful. Uh, they'll be helpful to us. So uh, they're not done yet. I think they're gonna be done soon. So um, Keith told me that uh, he thought within the month they'll, be, they'll have their guidelines to, presented, to be presented to the select board. There'll be some discussion there. So I'm thinking at our February meeting, uh, we may, which may be the right time, we'll see if it works with our own agenda, perhaps to have Keith come in and talk to us about that framework, because I think that'll be helpful to us. Even if there isn't a request this year for free cash, I think it's still a very good dialogue for, for um, 
uh, for FinCom to have, to get some, some more common thinking around what do we really mean when we're talking about affordable housing and how do we fund it and how do, what do we spend it on? So recently there was a property uh, that was supposed to be tagged for affordable housing, it still is on, on the Giro property, but the cost was so high, it came in over at 700,000, I think the, they had budgeted around 350. So the select board said, no, come back to us. And they're off looking now at a different way perhaps to build something there. Um, in addition, on the funding side, uh, there was a, um, so a little bit of good news. So the select board had uh, Senator Barrett in to talk about where the two home rule petitions are for potentially having either tr uh, transfer tax and or building permit funds being, uh, our, our Concord having the ability to add fees there so that we could start to build a self-supporting fund for affordable housing, not keep going to free cash. So he gave them an update. I'm going to say it's probably a month and a half ago now. I, I, it's a little while back. He wasn't terribly optimistic, not because it, it, it was a bad idea. He's very supportive of the idea. But anything that um, there are a number of towns asking for this and anything that affects all the towns, more than one town has a more difficult time getting uh, traction, I think, within the legislature. So so there, so he, it's still, it's still in there. They're still making, they're still uh, going to keep submitting requests on it. But he, he wasn't optimistic yet, uh, most optimistic about getting funding soon on that or getting a vote soon on it. However, then last week, um, MGH Brigham actually weighed in on the transfer tax, and uh, they are one of the largest employers in the state, I believe, and they came out and said that. They were very much in favor of the transfer tax uh, of uh, legislation uh, because of the issues they're having in finding uh, employees who can afford housing in some around some of the areas where their hospitals are. So the, 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 uh, Henry Dane commented at the select board, I think it was Monday, a couple of days ago, that um, that was good news. But even despite that, there wasn't um, a lot of hope that it was going to have a dramatic impact on on uh, on the, the speed with which we get it, but it, it's certainly helpful. So there's some there's some uh, light at the end of the tunnel, perhaps on the funding, but we're still we still have some time to go on that. Uh, we are looking forward to getting some guidelines from that uh, the Mr. Bergman and his committee. So hopefully we'll have that in February. So uh, I wanted to also show you sort of where we are. So we asked Kerry to give us a bit of a roll forward. So if we collected this much money. How much have we spent and how much is committed so that we'd have a picture for what are the funds that we currently have uh, or that 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 group currently has at their disposal to uh, to fund affordable housing. So, Carrie, can I ask you to to share that? Okay. Um, let's see if I have it. Oh, that's not, that's the wrong one. It's even too small for me to read. <laughs> okay. Here's affordable housing. Is this, can you, can you see this? No. A little bit bigger? Even for our numbers. A little bit bigger, right. You think it's not the same spreadsheet. So the, oh, this, this down is here. Tax. Oh, it's it's not showing. No, it looks like that was or maybe revenue or something. Yeah. Oh, that's Room weird. occupancy. I, yeah, let me. I might have it too. You no, no, I, I, okay. I, I have it. I thought it. I thought I was showing the right one. I don't know. That's it. Oh, okay. That's it. Right. Yep, that's it. So it's this highlighted section down here, um, and the balance. The balance I think it would be after. good to walk them through the whole thing, Carrie, because it, I think it, it was very helpful to me because, again, we have some new people too. just walk them through how this sure. how this works. So there there are three different warrant articles that were approved by town meeting in 2019, 20 and 21. Each of them, uh, there was a half a million dollars appropriated. 
from the, the first article, the 2019 article, there was 150,000 appropriated for the 93 Main Street project and the full 150 was spent. For the Juro affordable housing, there's $50,000 that was appropriated or allocated for the feasibility. And um, as of the date this report was prepared, 23,267 expended and 26,733 available. Uh, and then the third project here, $95,000 for the Emerson Annex project and all of that was expended. So that leaves from that article, $231,733. Um, from 2020, the full half million was appropriated for 100 Elmbrook and the, the appropriation for 100 Elmbrook was actually 570. So it, it took all of the 2020 article and 70,000 of 2021. So we had a balance here of $662,000. Um, and then to just sort of total what's available or uh, the, the Elmbrook property was actually voted to be released because it wasn't feasible. So when that was released, we had 1.205. And then with the commitment to Assabet River, there is a balance of 555,000 available. Okay, so I think Mary, that answers your question. And we can send this around, right, Kerry? So That'd be great. Have it. Sure. Yeah, I think, cause I know Mary, you had a question cause you know, we knew when we talked about this article last year, there was this commitment all of a sudden to spend. And then um, I think that commitment got released this year because the that's project, right. yeah. So that's why we came Great. back up to a million too. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, um, just to, just, I think it's helpful update. As I said, we'll see if we can get to, we can get some uh, guidelines discussion and here where this the, the, uh, the trust group is on those in February, but um, hopefully this is helpful discussion. Dean. That's great. Simple question: the um, the Elmbrook uh, buy down that eventually got released. What was the mechanism by which we were getting involved in the buy down? Do we have like some sort of right of first refusal on those units because that was originally developed as sort of an affordable neighborhood, if I recall? Um, how how did we how did we have a right to you know acquire something and then buy it down? Do, do we do we have a right of first refusal? I just don't know how it works. That's all. I don't remember anymore. A year ago, I think I, I knew that one. I don't know if Ray, if you do you know anything about Elmbrook, Ray? Doesn't sound well, like you know, I know where it is and yeah, okay. I remember the discussion, but okay. I didn't realize it had even been released. I thought that buy down had already happened. I didn't realize it was five hundred and seventy thousand dollars. No. Well, we will give you that question and maybe you can find out from Liz the okay. the, the the answer for Dean. That would be helpful. That's my homework. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Okay, good. All right, so that's the update on um, affordable housing. And Thank then you. just, you're welcome. We're going to go to a uh, calendar review. All right, so you've got this in your agenda. Um, Carrie, can you share it? Is it possible for you to share that so they can see it? Yeah, I can. Just one moment. Sure. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so just some important dates here. And I really want to reset. Um, can everybody read it? You can see it now? We're getting there. <laughs> okay. It was Good. pretty tiny looking in the in the packet. So it's yeah. still tiny. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So uh, just to reset, you know, the next couple of months, we have a lot going on. So to make sure everybody knows what's what's happening here. So the warrant closes on the second, so we'll have our warrant articles in. The ballot vote on the middle school debt is on the third. Um, the warrant articles themselves are due at the end of February, and our FinCom report is due April 22nd. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that. 
and how we get ready. You skip, you skip the town caucus on February 7th. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what happens at the town caucus, Mary? We nominate people for the upcoming offices, and I will be nominated to um, run for the um, select board. Yes, you will. I just want to bring that up. Mary, at a commercial. Mary, <laughs> Mary am, am I correct in thinking that there's only one candidate running? Well, there's going to be two seats open, so there's two candidates. Oh, but one's for re-election. That's right. That's right. Okay, good. Thank you for uh, that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Absolutely. Uh, so in terms of the work, so we have, as I said, we're going to have to uh, evaluate these Warren articles, the ones we sort of talked about this evening. So we'll answer some questions. We're going to have some hearings. So you can see those starting, they start in um, at the end of February. That's the first one's a select board hearing. And then you'll see the ones that say FC next to them. So on March 3rd, on March 10th and March 17th, those are the hearings that we run. They generally cover the town budget, its capital, the school budgets, their capital and the um, CPC articles. And then we have a third hearing at that third hearing in March 17th, we also um, run a hearing around the, the enterprise, uh, you know, a public light and sewer, uh, the, uh, uh, what's the other one, the light plant and the- um, Recreation. The, recre yeah, recre there's a couple that are in the enterprise function that we, we run a hearing on as well. So, Christine, a quick question yeah. about that, to put it on our calendars, are those all at like seven o'clock in the evening or I don't see uh, them posted, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they, they generally are. Sometimes they're a little earlier, but I but uh, I, I is that timing up to us, Mary? Do we set the timing? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. I'll find out. Yeah, okay, but I would you. say it's like six or seven o'clock, Amber. Okay. Yeah, so they're in the evening. Um, and we we run the hearing, but it's really a chance for the folks who are putting forward articles to um, obviously have the public hear what they're uh, what what they're putting forward, hear questions and answers from questions from the public, answers from the folks presenting, questions from FinCom. So it's our opportunity to ask questions as well on the on the articles. So uh, some of them we'll be very familiar with. Some of them, um, if they're large, hopefully we'll have a, a good view going in. Uh, most of them we've talked about tonight. And then if they're a smaller one, this may be our first, you know, our first exposure to it. So uh, it's good to attend those. So make sure you have it in your schedule to come. Um, let's see. Then after we have the hearings, then we have uh, the FinCom report is also starting to get work done. So Lois is our, um, our I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask Lois, <laughs> Lois, as you did last year. <laughs> I would like you to lead our process on, on the on the uh, on the uh, FinCom report, and obviously work with me. And um, we're going to talk about how we produce the things and the um, the numbers in there. So Parashar this year came forward with some nice projections. So I believe Parashar will be on your team, and I know Greg. I think you were helpful last year in terms of knowing how the um, some of the spreadsheets that Dean produces are used. So you're you're going to be the new Dean, I think, in this in this report. Okay. Yeah, I'll give credit. Dean actually did most of the work on that one. We got <laughs> okay. ready. Oh, right. But I Dean need you to credit. <laughs> he does, but I need you to be the man. So because Dean Dean will be off next year. So I need somebody who uh, knows last how year I can be works. advisory this year. Yep. You could be advisory, exactly right. And so I think Parashar Lois and Greg are probably lead on that, but um, I will, uh, uh, Lois, you and I will talk about, um, as we get closer, we'll have a better sense of what we want the content to be. And then uh, depending upon what uh, committee you observed, you will all have a role to play. So Lois will call on you for content uh, in, the, uh, in the document, depending on the topics that we want to include. Okay, so everybody plays a role in that. So there'll be a separate schedule around when your content is due and when we review it, et cetera. Okay. I see Dee has her hand up. Yep. I just have a quick question about the hearings. Has there been any discussion whether they'll be live or if they'll be Zoom? No, it's a really good question, Dee. I don't know the answer to that. Um, yeah. I believe, uh, I mean, we did the, the hearing for um, 
the, the, the Warren article for special town meeting, we did it um, both. And I think that worked out fine, but I don't, it's a different time. So I assume yeah. as we get closer to it, we'll see how people, what people feel comfortable with. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay. So I think, I think that's kind of the main, the main things uh, to, to cover with you in terms of Warren articles. So, um, you know, Parashar really has through the guidelines process, uh, you know, the operating budgets. Eric, I'm going to ask you to pay um, a lot of attention to the capital requests that are going to, you're going to see those, right? So I'd like you to um, be my lead on that. Um, yep. uh, Peggy, you've got CPC. Uh, Ray, you've got affordable housing. If there is anything, there may not be anything there. And then um, the senior means tested D, can you take that one? I think that'll be a small amount, but if, if you can take that one, that would help me. And it just depends on what we're going to do with it that, you know, the, I don't know the work associated with any of these yet. It's just a function of making sure we have somebody who's assigned to it. So if we need to do things, we can get it done. So for the February meeting, um, I've got to come up with what we want to do. Uh, I don't have my, I haven't really thought through, but I, again, I think the, 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 the meeting with affordable housing would be good. Is there anybody else uh, based on our discussion tonight? And obviously we still have to do work on the school budget. So we know that there'll be some continuing discussion with the schools. So it could be that we have the schools come back to talk about budget in February. And uh, we have a discussion on affordable housing. Is there anybody else who wants another committee from town who's doing anything that you want information on so that I can invite them to come in? Anybody, if you don't have to answer me now, if you think of anything where I'm looking for what information you guys think you need in order to uh, you know, vote on Warren articles. So if there's somebody you wanna hear from directly, let me know. Sure. All right, so you can, you can take that, you can take that away. All right. Hey, Chris, there's a select here? board member in the attendees yes. with their hand up that you may want ah, to admit. Okay, who is that, John? Terry Ackerman. Terry, okay, can, let me, uh, Carrie, can you stop sharing the calendar and we'll bring, we'll bring Terry up. Coming in. Hi. Hi. This um, always takes so long to, to promote the person. I know. We're waiting. Um, okay, three really quick items. Um, to answer Amrit's question, I believe all the hearings are at seven o'clock, but they're going to be printed on the front cover of the warrant that's okay. going to be to every house. Thank uh, you. To answer these question, I am trying to get the uh, room in the townhouse set up um, as we did recently for the public hearing for the special town meeting and we had the sound system that we rented and everyone could hear well and we're trying to do that again um, we're also trying to order that equipment so we own it and if the corona cases keep going down like they are we'll be able to do those hearings live in that room good Great, thank and you, And then Carrie. finally, I want to invite everybody on FinCom. If you don't know about it already, we're having a meeting on Monday night about the ARPA and infrastructure grants. And I know some of the topics you talked about tonight are gonna to come up like Acevit Bluff. Um, there might be a way to fund some of those kind of projects through ARPA. Um, so I encourage all of you to try and make that meeting on Monday night. Thanks. Okay. Well, Thank you, Terry. Is that like a selectman meeting that's live streamed? Yes. Yes. That will be a Zoom select board meeting, six thirty okay. on the thirty first of January. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. So I think then we come to. Uh, let me see if I have this right. Am I at public comment? Is that where I am? I don't have my agenda now. I seem to have misplaced it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We're at public comment. Yes, we are. Okay. All right. So um, 
there's anybody from the public who wants to make a comment, please uh, raise your hand or turn your camera on and we can um, uh, promote you. I don't, I don't see, I, I don't see anyone. There's no hands, there's three people in there. Okay, terrific. All right, so if there's no public comment, then I will um, take a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. Second. All right. I will uh, start a roll call vote. Chris Reynolds, I say yes. D. Ortner. Yes. Mary Hartman. Peggy Briggs. Yes. Greg Gorello. Yes. Ray Andrews. Yes. Dean Banfield. Yes. Amrith Kumar. Yes. John Hickling. Yes, please. Eric Dahlberg. Yes. Brian Taylor. Yes. Lois Wassoff. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Good meeting. I know I jammed a lot in. Oh, you did. <laughs> okay. there's, a, there's a comment to that effect in the chat, which says, thank you for a great meeting. So thank you for oh, a great good. meeting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good okay. night.